I purposely today did not wear a sports jacket and dress shirt. I purposely today did about one-tenth the prep I normally do for the broadcast. And that's because I don't normally actually come in here and purpose to do anything but stream of consciousness and to tell the truth and to have our guest on and look at what's happening in the world. But I, I tend to sit here at home and when I get into the office for hours, pouring over news clips, video clips, articles, guest information, and kind of get lost in just trying to categorize it all and then cover it. Every day in the broadcast, and 60, 70% of what I wanted to cover, I didn't get to. A lot of times the most important information. And it's almost like trying to gather it all together and then order it in my mind is the reason I'm actually not getting to a lot of it on air, I kind of realized. I was sitting back this morning reading a Paul Watson article on Infowars.com where the State Department spokesman comes out and basically threatens Russia and says, if you don't get out of Syria, you're going to have terror attacks in your own country. Now, you have to understand, the West did create these groups. They did give them a safe haven. And Paul Watson rightly says it's a threat to Russia. It, in, in fact, he did that in his article. But you can go back three years ago, the ambassador to the UN, uh, Bandar Bush, that's his nickname, uh, Prince Sultan Bandar, threatened at the UN, the uh, Russian foreign minister, Lavrov, and this was on Russian TV, but it was also came out in Saudi Arabian news, and said, we're going to attack you with our jihad armies that are encircling you if you don't back off. Saudis threaten Russia with Olympic terrorist attacks unless it abandons Syrian support. That's 2013. You can actually go watch the reports about it. So that's an Infowars.com story, but it links through to uh, RT and other uh, TV breakdowns of it. So this is just more of the same. You're seeing the recklessness. I mean, this is so reckless and so dangerous that it's surreal. And then it gets even more surreal. I was sitting there this morning looking out over the Texas Hill Country, and I was thinking about history and, 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 and what's happened in human culture, and I was thinking, why am I so... Concerned, And I said, it's clear these people are megalomaniacs. They're insane. And they haven't learned from history. And, and, and then I was thinking, why am I so troubled by them going on MSNBC and CNN and putting my picture up there with Putin's, with Trump's, and saying that we're, quote, Russian agents and we get our orders from Putin and he's our godfather? Because I was thinking, it's ridiculous. It's made up. It's, it's, it's not true. That's just another sovereign nation trying to get out from under globalism, just like the Brexit. They don't say we're British agents because we're modeling what we're doing after the Brexit. They're modeling what they did off of 1776. Nigel Farage has said that. We're imitating common sense, you know, like the French kicking the Nazis out at the end of World War II with the help of the U.S. and the Allies. And then it clicked. I mean, I already knew this, but it clicked. It's like, oh, my gosh, they really are going to have a war with Russia. And anyone that doesn't go along with the war is a Russian agent. Because none of this makes sense, and it's comical, unless you know you're going for broke and you don't care. And that's why the elite are all buying bunkers and leaving the United States. And it may not be this year or next year, but it's what Joel Skousen talks about. World War III with the Russians is set in the next four to five years, and the globalists want to entice the Russians to attack in a first strike. Oh, man, I, I, I mean, I'm sure of it. It hit me like that train that went off the tracks in Yonkers, killing three people and injuring over 100. I mean, it was like, boom. That's why they're going to start a war with Russia. And then if you don't want to have a war and all the gun confiscation that comes with it, they're going to arrest you. I purposely did not wear a sports jacket, did not wear a dress shirt today. I purposely only did about two hours of prep. Normally I would do four hours of prep and I realize, I've known this for a while, but I've really psychoanalyzed it for myself. I remember my grandfather's listening to the radio 
and hearing some stock news or some farming news or some oil news and getting excited or going, you know, cussing under their breath occasionally or reading the newspaper, my mom's dad especially, and just face turning red sometimes because he really cared. God, I miss all those folks that are dead. Great people. You don't see people like that anymore. It's scary. And I was just thinking about it this morning. I was like, wow. I get in here and I research all this news. I study it at the, at, you know, in the evening, at night. I work on Saturday and Sunday. I'm not complaining. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But no wonder after I watch 20, 30 video clips and look at over 100 news articles conservatively, I get on air and it's like, how do I tell people how real this is? I have trouble believing how open this is, where yesterday, I probably got to only five of them. There was more than 20 articles from mainstream media promoting the United Nations running America's elections, our police, everything. It's really happening. And then I sit there and I watch State Department clips where they say, we'll basically turn jihadis loose in Russia to attack Russian targets inside Russia if you don't pull out. We have that clip coming up. And then I remember three years ago, the, 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 the UN ambassador from Saudi Arabia, Prince Sultan Bandar, threatening the Russians with jihadi attacks if they didn't back out of Syria. And I know that the globalists and, and NATO and Hillary and Obama created ISIS. That's admitted. The Pentagon knows that. General Flynn knows that. And that's really the guy in there that's the quarterback with uh, Trump. Trump's the head coach. But let me tell you, the quarterback's Flynn. Flynn's running the show. In fact, the word is Flynn didn't even want the VP position. He said, no, I don't want that. I want to be able to totally focus on not just giving proxy speeches, but actually getting stuff lined up. In fact, I didn't play all of Flynn a few weeks ago whenever Trump chumped the uh, mainstream media and said he was going to respond to the birther controversy and spent 30 seconds on it at the end of a 45-minute rally with a bunch of Congressional Medal of Honor winners and generals and, 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 and former admirals and people endorsing him. We ought to cue that up today and, and play General Flynn almost coming to tears talking about 1775, Lexington and Concord, this is it. America has been captured. We have to take it back. That's what's happened, folks. And the news won't carry Trump's speeches when he says Hillary Clinton is a Chinese agent. She is. This isn't rhetoric. So no wonder they call Trump a Russian agent. No wonder they call me a Russian agent and, and put our faces up there with Vladimir Putin on CNN and MSNBC and you name it. Because these are globalists. These are people that hijacked our country. They are the outsiders. And as I've said a thousand times, once you identify that an outside global force has hijacked you with 21st century high-tech algorithms that have taken over the stock markets, the interest rates, the currency rates, the economy, that's all admitted. And you understand that there's five mega banks that control basically almost everything now, and they want to mop up what's left of wealth to control you. And you identify that the New World Order is a worldwide corporate tyranny. And the former head of the NSA, technical leader, the guy that actually ran the NSA, that was number two at the NSA, comes on and, and I say, what is the master plan? He goes, a global corporate government. It is a technocracy, a total takeover. The NSA isn't joining with other countries for America. The NSA is forming a global grid. And this is the death of this country, people. You're watching it, okay? This is a admitted program. And they admit it, but they've done it to a great extent. And that's why the State Department's so arrogant. And that's why the Saudis are so arrogant. And that's why the Communist Chinese are so arrogant. Almost every movie I go see now that has to do with technology or science fiction or action adventure the communist Chinese are in it at the Politburo advising America with red flags flying with hammers and sickles and pictures of Mao. And then they tell NASA, they tell the Army, they tell the superheroes what to do. They tell the Avengers what to do. They tell, you know, what type of booster to, to save 
Matt Damon when he's stuck on Mars. I mean, it, it, and again, when you go see almost every movie and the, it's Chinese communist propaganda, you're like, what in the world is going on? I, I mean, you know, that alone, everybody should just go, whoa, and the hair on the back of their neck. The first few times I started seeing it, remember they didn't uh, release Red Dawn for over a year because it had the communist Chinese attacking. So they changed it to North Korea. And they had to reshoot and re-edit a bunch of the movie. That's how controlled we are. That's who's running our country. Do the Russians control what goes on in our movies? Do the British, for that matter? No, it's global government. Iceland has pulled out of it. The UK is trying to pull out. Russia is trying to pull out. We're trying to pull out. And a lot of people, like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who's a smart guy, but, you know, he, he just, he doesn't get one level of this three-dimensional chess game. And, and I say this because it's a fact. I've been proved right. The emails are all public. The, you know, the data leaks. It's everything I said. World government. George Soros trying to cause race wars. He stabilized the country. And, and criminal elites here in the U.S., transferring power to the UN because Roberts goes it's the United States and the neocons it's not the UN I know that it's criminals here transferring the power into a diplomatically immune combine the UN's only the head of it the OECD the IMF the World Bank the WTO the TPP agreement they're transferring it to this system above us but he gets caught and goes but it's America yes it's criminals that used our energy our weapons our culture to empower the, the, the machine. But we're being melted down to form the new system. It's a fact. The UN with Justice Department power is coming in to run our police departments. It's a fact. They're running a call for reparations for, quote, black people. It's a fact that they're suing Arpaio and, and getting ready to sue the Texas government for even having any border control. It's a fact they're running the refugees coming into Europe and coming into the United States. It's a fact they're running global carbon taxes. It's a fact. But people get lost in it because always it was supposed to be America running the UN, America running the global government. That was the whole plan. It's why after World War II, the United States funded the whole thing with the Rockefellers, and it was supposed to be America is going to project Americanism and free market into the world with this global corporate government by giving technology to third world countries to build them up. But it was all double-crossed. And by 49, the decision was made. It's in the Royal Commission. 1949, look it up. Queen Elizabeth's father's name is on the letterhead. And they said, we're not going to industrialize the third world. We're going to exploit it, have reservations of high-tech, give them nothing, let their populations explode, and then exploit them further, and then use them in reverse colonization within the next 60 years to overtake our Western competitors. They're, it's cold-blooded people. They got a plan, and they mean business. And you've got corrupt, strongman, gangster-style Russia stumbling around trying to get reorganized that barely pulled away from the robber barons. And the West is trying to destroy that while it's trying to destroy itself. And the Brits learn, hey, 90% of your laws, or more, are made by the European Union, and you never got to vote to enter it. So the Brits vote to go, yeah, we should be able to make our own laws. We want out of this. We don't want open borders. We don't want all these huge taxes. We don't want to be like France or Germany. And I told you before it happened, I said, this mayor is going to ignore all this, this Muslim mayor, and is going to say, I'm going to issue visas within the city I control. And, of course, he's now announced that. And how do I know he'd do that? Because it's a battle plan. Arnold, I'm going to skip this break, Schwarzenegger was hired six years ago when the Copenhagen Treaty fell through for carbon taxes globally because it raped the third world. It was sold as a way to empower the third world. Oh, liberal, loving, a liberal world order. It was a nightmare system of eugenics and control. It would kill a billion people over a decade, most experts agreed. Horrible. Talk about turning the global economy off, this would do it. And then make who was surviving in third worlds flood even harder. Again, the big refugee crisis they've been planning. And 
Schwarzenegger was dispatched to organize programs to get mayors elected with UN and IMF and World Bank and Soros money in every major industrialized country to then create their own sanctuary cities and to, quote, work with the UN and become partners with it to circumvent national sovereignty. And Schwarzenegger gave press conferences and was in the news saying we're going to circumvent Congress. We're going to circumvent this and we're going to implement this because the earth needs to be safe it's heating up it is heating up this is a pig with admittedly thousands of automatic weapons four or five army tanks helicopters with rocket launchers on them because he's an elitist he can have it he wants to ban semi-auto but it's okay because he's a republican and republicans feel good because oh he's in our team or whatever pure bull so I knew what Khan would do. I looked at who funded him, I knew. I know the exact battle plan. I know their playbook. And by the way, I'm not bragging. How stupid are our governors and others that think they know what's going on and are only partway fighting this when this is, you know, it's like, I, mean, I get called sometimes by former governors, current governors, and they're like, Alex, I don't want to come on the air, but I want you to know we listen all the time, but you're just, you're the tip of the spear, and thanks for making it safe for us to talk. But wow, you're being proven right. This is really happening. And I'm like, this is much worse than I'm even saying, okay? This is cut and dry. You must address it for how bad it is and how serious it is because that's what it is. If an asteroid was coming and it was 2 million miles out and it was going to get here in a couple months and it was the size of Rhode Island and was going to kill all the life on Earth and create a new ice age, we need to get ships on the, on the gantry, on the launch pad. We need to launch everything we've got with weapons and go out there and nuke the damn thing or die trying. Oh, that's fear mongering. You say a giant asteroid's coming. Again, this is figurative for, for the New York Times and others. You'll still deceive your people and still MSNBC and cut me out saying a giant asteroid's coming. It, it's, a, it's an analogy. It's an allegory. It's a parable. It's an example. It's a case point. You've got this 25 mile wide asteroid coming, okay? It's a couple million miles away. It's going to be here in a few months. We could mobilize and stop it, but you've got to admit the damn thing's coming. You've got to admit it's going to T bone right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with the computer models. They know when it's going to hit. They know the minute it's coming into the atmosphere. We got to stop it. We are faced with a technological takeover, stealing our ingenuity, stealing our ideas, sequestering it, building a breakaway civilization that's mopping up Africa, mopping up Latin America, mopping up Asia, mopping up Russia, mopping up the Middle East with destabilization, mopping up our families, mopping up our farms. Mopping up the Amish. Ending everything. And they write books and they brag and they say the future doesn't need you. It's going to be great. We're going to phase you out. It's going to be a utopia. You're done. And they just walk by like we don't even exist. And then they have these stay behind networks. These rear guard actions as they build their breakaway civilization over here on the launch pad right in front of us. A hundred times the Manhattan Project in their own words. I'm here going, uh, uh, uh. they're so arrogant they admit this. We're going to do something. And the average man is telling me about fantasy football, uh, and the average woman, you know, is getting their eyelashes done. Fine, I, I mean, I get it, whatever. Just going on about your life. And I'm sitting here watching these idiots in mainstream media who are going along with the destruction of the planet and their own species, thinking they're on a winning team reading off teleprompters. When their kids are eating GMO, they're breathing the poison air. Everywhere I turn, people are getting Parkinson's, young people, neurological disorders. They're, they're, we are being murdered. The, the globalists are on such a demonic power trip that they believe they're going to have this super technology soon with the singularities. They can just do whatever they want, clean up the earth in a flash, whatever, where they don't even care if reactors leak or melt down now. They, they admit they just have, you know, Mombiot and the Guardian going, I love radiation. It's good. Ooh. You know, it's like, let them eat cake, slit your wrist, dance around like a psychopath. The people that are running this are under a delusion. They think they know what's going on. They do not know what's going on. And I will assure them, you are not going to get this promised land you've been offered. See, Donald Trump just wants to continue with what we got. Helicopters, jets, hotels, golf courses, beautiful women, his kids, hamburgers.
He wants to be dominant. He wants to, you know, but hey, that's not fair. China's screwing us. I'll make a better deal and I'll be a big hero. And oh, that's great. You know, they just know he's a throwback, just an old fashioned guy that wants to have prosperity. You know, he, he's an authoritarian. He wants to crack heads of enemies and stuff. And that's why they cannot stand him because they've got something a hundred times more twisted, more sophisticated. You know, they look at just strong men in Russia and strong men in America and just guys that want to have a big prosperous country and have the people love them and want to build something and, you know, let me tell you what will what'll explain everything to you. My grandmother, who had, I think it was like a master's in English, I think she went and got her doctorate in it or something, but the point is, is that she would go from Teague, Texas on a bullet train when my dad was like five, six years old to the, I think it was Rice, down in uh, Houston, and because and there's photos of her, you know, young and beautiful getting on the bullet train that looks like one of those trains from the old Superman movies, the old Superman TV shows, you know, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. You know, those big, fast bullet trains, big black trains. And that thing would go 120, 130 miles an hour for the 100 miles down to Houston. And she'd get down there in less than an hour and come right back. It was, a, it was an express. And today... Trains on that very line don't go above 40 miles an hour because the beds never got fixed, so it'll shake. So in 2016, the, the, the freight trains can't go more than 45 miles an hour. And that's why you see you know, people fall asleep at the switches or things malfunctioning or trains flying off the rail beds because our infrastructure is falling apart, people. They have 300-mile-an-hour trains in Tokyo. They have 280-mile-an-hour trains in France. We have 45-mile-an-hour trains. You see... You know, in the early 1950s, that was the end of innovation where they, you know, by 1900 had bullet trains going 100 miles an hour. They had trains going 160 miles an hour by the time the decision was made to scrap the railroads in the late 1950s. See, it wasn't about innovation anymore. It wasn't about building something for the people. It was about taking all your resources, hoarding it. So the elites can talk about Mars bases and all this other stuff, and then we get nothing down here. The allegory is Elysium. They're, they're, they're breaking away, not making this the golden fields, but creating their own golden fields sucked off of us. The, the, the ultimate form of siege against the people. And then I've got a report coming up that Darren McBreen did about how they said there were no tax penalties in, in the bill and no penalties on Obamacare. And then now, of course... Started three years ago, the first numbers came in, $1.8 billion in fines of millions of Americans. And, and, and the Washington Times says the media wrongly attacked Drudge. No, they didn't have hundreds of newspapers wrongly attack Drudge and InfoWars and others. They didn't, wrongly, they knew it was in the bill. They just lied to people to go ahead and get the thing implemented to rape them. It's not like they're accidentally doing this. They want to flaunt the FBI director in front of you with Hillary above the law. They want to have on Charlie Rose at the State Department and on C-SPAN, all these different government bureaucrats go, man, the public's dumb. We sure are screwing them. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, and just laugh. I'm going to put a compilation. Laughing. It's always the same demonic laugh of, of victory, of just, of just, they are our slaves. They are under our servitude. We have won. And these people all look like demons when they're doing it. They all do the same. <laughs> it's like fake. <laughs> like Hillary. <laughs> and it's like, wow, man, these are bad people. They're not like us, okay? And that's what I'm getting at here. If I'm in a restaurant and I see a poor family with a kid who's paralyzed and, and the child seems so loving and the parents are trying to feed it and it's, uh, 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 and it's like 18 years old, this child, I sit there and I feel pain and I want to help those people and I feel empathy and, 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 and psychopaths would call me weak. But no, I'm not weak. I'm strong. That's why I feel all this. I open myself up to it. You people are the opposite. You decided to... 
not care. So now you love it. You love the honeybees dying. You love it. You love it. You love it. You love the death of the earth. You celebrate. You love it. You want World War III. You love death. One of the biggest attacks we see out there from the corporate mouthpiece media is that I'm a fear monger. That I'm trying to scare people. And I jump right into that briar patch and I say, absolutely, I am trying to scare people. Because I'm, I'm not scared. Something happens as a male, as a man, if you are a man, and I'm not bragging, it's just it's, it, it, it clicks, is that when you know everybody's in danger and you know you're right and you've got children especially, something clicks and you don't have fear anymore. You have concern and a duty and a will to face it. And I'm telling you, most men never become men because they don't tap into that and that sense of purpose and that drive. And then all your instincts, your, your ancestors, God, your spirit, everything turns on. And, 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 I, and I know why the average man who may have experienced this a few times doesn't want to experience it because it's a lot to be a man. It's, it's big. It's old. It's real. And... Anybody that's a man out there can look at what's going on and the and the 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 Armageddon level scenarios that lay out before us, the minefield that we're walking through with our children and our culture and our women is the most danger this species has ever been. All of my instincts, my spirit, my gut, every bit of it is on a knife's edge right now. Crying out, people, wake up, repent, get on your knees, turn this around, don't go down this road. Danger, 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 danger. The babies with three parents, the chimera mutant creatures, our government openly funding the most satanic, evil jihadis. Obama making jokes about it. Some people say I need to bring in, I can't really do a good Obama imitation like him, Bill Clinton. Here, I'll do Obama in the voice of Clinton. It's the same spirit. Some people think we got to just bring in Christians from Syria. We're not going to do that. That's not fair. We're going to bring everybody in. But what he didn't tell you, then he laughs a little chuckle, is they know full well they let 0.4% in when Syria is 20% Christian or was. I mean, they are not letting Christians out. And I got to sit there and watch him have a little enjoyment. Only time I see Obama actually has any real enjoyment is when Christians are getting killed. And I'm like, what is in that guy? What, what spirit? And if I've got one complaint, it's that I've got to look at Obama. I got to look at Michael Moore. I got to look at Hillary. I got to look at Michelle, who are all just crazed, power hungry demons, just, just looking at everybody like they want to tear everybody apart. I mean, where is the discernment of people? When you look at Hillary, that is a visible demon. Probably the most evil-looking person I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that big joker face, that plastic face. I mean, and, it's, and then what she does is the proof of it all. She'll walk around on stage for an hour with her mouth wide open like an like a anglerfish. fish. <laughs> <sighs> Drunk on power, drunk on the blood of the innocent. God deliver us. Oh, my God. I, I've got a bunch of clips here. I want to get to the State Department threatening Russia with al-Qaeda forces. They say ISIS, but it's the same thing, same thing. And we've got Trump ahead in a bunch of polls and We've got a lot of other important news here. we got the FBI openly admitting what came out in the news last week, that, oh, they were never going to prosecute anybody. And then, oh, they attacked InfoWars, and oh, they attacked Daily Caller, and oh, they attacked Drudge and everybody else, because we said, oh, look at this document. The FBI admits they were never going to prosecute anybody. And, oh, shut up, conspiracy theorist. And then it turns out it's all true. Well, it didn't turn out. It, it always was. We had the FBI document. It was admitted. It came out to Congress. By the way, you see this massive censorship of the media, uh, of nationalists, of patriots, of people that just aren't in the cult of death. Those of us that don't want to blow the planet up, 
Those of us that don't get mad at our neighbor, they have a bigger swimming pool than us. You know, those of us that just like prosperity and never get tired of the simple things. Those of us that don't want to grab kids out of, you know, backyards and torture them. You know, people like us. You know, just, we're not perfect. We just don't want to, you know, murder Christians for no reason. We're just not to screw everybody over. You know, the, the bad guys. The Pope took over the Catholic Church. Say what you wanted about the Catholic Church before. It did a lot of good and in some of its activities. I mean, I just judge free by its fruits. And I'm not Catholic. I'm just studying. But then they come in with the left, through the seminaries, through the Jesuits, and infiltrate it with pedophile group groups to then blackmail the church, trick the church into not kicking it out early in the 50s, take it over, and then officially they admit, had the Jesuits, those be the guardians of the church, blackmail it, and put the black pope in power. That's what they call a, again, the head of the Jesuits, folks, for the news says he called him black in a derogatory term. Jones, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is amazing. Savage censored as Pope calls journalists terrorists. He said those that engage in conspiracy theories are, quote, deplorable. He's following the same script. Hell, the Jesuits probably wrote the script for Hillary. That's what a lot of folks, in fact, that's what, that's actually what uh, Steve Pachanik is on tomorrow, who's the former head of psychological warfare for the State Department. Oh, he's on today, excuse me, and other agencies. He was on, what, two weeks ago, and he said, this looks like Jesuit propaganda coming out of Hillary. Because Tim Kaine's a Jesuit, and then now you see him with the exact same words. We're terrorists now. What did the UN say in the Washington Post yesterday uh, in, their, in their human rights panel that came out that Saudi Arabia and Qatar had up? That, that's funny. It'd be like having Hitler oversee the Nuremberg trials or having a fox again oversee the hen house. They came out and they said, America engaged in terrorism against black people. And so America owes reparations. See, we're terrorists now. Oh, you're starting to see your Russian agents. You're terrorists. You're a journalist that points out Obamacare isn't free. You can't keep your doctor. It was written by foreign insurance companies to screw you. There are penalties of $5,000 a year up to. How do you counter that? Well, you have the supposed religious leader of the biggest single religious sect in the world, Catholicism, come out and tell you that you are a deplorable terrorist. And I have been listed by name by Hillary Clinton as a dark heart, quite frankly, king of the deplorables. You know what I'm the king of? Seeing you. I see you, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm, I'm a wicked person. I mean, I, I, my good overbalances, I love God, I go with God, but I've always been able to just read the wicked's handwriting better than they can read it. And now there's no need to even be able to read their handwriting. It's, it's running the world. I mean, this, you're, this is a nice taste of a devil-run planet right here, baby. And I know the energies these people have given into. And I know where they take you. I haven't gone too far down the rabbit hole, but I've gone further than most that didn't succumb to it, let me tell you. I know what goes on inside their heads. It's a roar. Like a thousand jet engines. And it wants to kill this planet. They're higher than a kite, folks. On pit of hell, satanic rage. And they want to kill you and your family. And they want to first mutate every plant, every animal, and have disease and pain and suffering and keep you alive through excruciating pain to milk it and imprison as many people as they can and just just, just, just absolutely just uh, mutilate and vandalize God's creation. In the words of the cartoon version of Age Skrelix, I want a you-know-what all over the Western world. And in the empty, soulless mind of Carl the Cuck, oh, yeah, that'd be great. 
because they're big game hunters, folks. Now, they can mount America's head on the wall and teach us to be the engine of evil. What it, it was Bismarck said. Bismarck said, God loves. God loves and gives providence to children, drunks, and the United States of America. Check me on that. I think that's Bismarck. Just providence of the quote, God loves children, drunks, the United States of America. Uh, it, it's Bismarck. Pull it up for me, please. Got the unified Germany. God did love the United States of America because of the providence, because of the reason it was founded. And look how great it's been. Look how special it's been. And now we've been captured and used to build this satanic kingdom. And now it intends to rise above the nation states and lay all the other nation states down low below it. Tear everything apart and reconstruct the rubble in a new planet. That's what the high-level initiates believe they're going to get. But if they took one look into the energy force that's behind them, they would know this isn't creative destruction. Because the devil is never a maker. The devil is a betrayer and a taker. I want to go to break. Speaking of the devil being a taker and a betrayer, Obama looking to that poor black woman in Florida who said, I've got a car, we live in the car, and we try to shower at the you know YMCA, but we just were like a little house, and I work a couple jobs, but they just doesn't pay for it. So that's how they've set up a society now. So you have to go to the government unless you break through to the middle class. And she says, we're going to help you. We're going to get you that car. I mean, we're going to get you that house. Two years later, she didn't have anything. And local patriot Christian conservatives got the lady a house, and now she's doing well. Got out of the poverty cycle. Think of the PR stunt if some rich California donor or something would come and help that poor old black lady. They don't want more people knocking on that door. They don't want to help you. They want to keep you down. George Soros only picks cases of rightful police shootings so that he can cause a riot, cause division, and then create massive racism against black people and scapegoat them for what's happening, at the same time as scapegoating the cops and local government. See, just like, just like Hillary, just like Hillary, and the emails came out, we knew this at the time from our sources, the Chicago police, that they would send people in, bus them in, with, but it was Hillary paid for, it was Move On paid for, George Soros paid for, that group. They'd send the buses in, they'd, get, they'd give them all Bernie shirts. And most of the Democrats were so dumb, and they were getting paid 50 bucks a day plus lunch, and, and it, I'm told it's more, more pay now. There's folks bitching on tape about how low the pay is, and they tell them, they go typecast, find folks that are angry. They give them a Bernie shirt. They think they're even with the Bernie campaign. They don't check. Move on, move on. Oh, that's with Bernie. Don't know. White, black, you name it. Just angry, you know, thugs. They dump them out. Let's go fight the racist. They go attack the Trump people. The media claims Trump did it. This is full spectrum dominance. This is an example. But then Trump then comes out and blames Sanders and the media. So Sanders gets hurt in the eyes of Democrats, her competitor. Trump gets hurt in the general eyes of everybody and in the eyes of Hillary supporters, driving everyone to Hillary. Now, that is a checkers level move. The public can't get that. We have the proof. They're beyond chess. They're three level, folks, and you've got to be able to just project into it and then see their algorithms, see their changes, see their moves, and then the whole picture comes into frame. So quite frankly, usually when I'm here covering one article or this, my brain's over here thinking about the larger picture just wanting to come and give you the larger picture and just say, look, you've seen enough evidence. I mean, look, here's the Pope today saying go after the free press. I mean, you know, here, more hacked emails from Soros, you know, how to defend radical Muslims and keep the borders open and demonize, quote, anybody that's Islamophobic. But I'm going to come back from break and play this Darren McBreen piece. I'm talking about devilish betrayal. Knowing that it would put 
just what we estimated, economists estimated, 35 million people or more, I haven't checked in a year or so, have gone from full-time uh, employment to part-time under Obamacare and then lost any benefits they had. And by the way, employers want to pay people more. They want to find the really good employees. They want you to then be taken care of and want to stay there and then help find other people. So once you get kicked out of full-time, you're never even seen as somebody that works there. So now upward mobility has been 35 million people like that went to part-time. You didn't get Obamacare. The prices of health care have more than doubled. That's on average. It's gone up even more for a lot of people. And there's penalties. And they sit up there and they look at you and they go, it's a lie. The same guy that thinks there's giant wasp under the UN building, Alex Jones, says that you can't keep your doctor and that there's death panels. And then she sits there with that little chicken neck and that short haircut and smacks her lips with her glassy eyes. He goes, see, he's crazy. He's crazy. We have to find that clip. They say that it, they say Obama's going to rip you off and there's death panels and there's penalties in the IRS. This is what goes on in the delusional mind of right wing crazies. And she knows full well it's in there, but she's betraying you. Imagine how cold it is in those offices with a bunch of vampires all, eh, all act fake and all hen peck each other on who's more liberal and that's not the proper language. They're the most unhappy people on earth. Oh my God, thank God we're not these people. I mean, I'm sorry, they're just pure evil. And then the penalties start kicking in. We're paying them right now because most of my crew doesn't even want them, want Obamacare. And they just say, it doesn't exist. You're dehumanized. You never existed. I have employees walk to me and go, yeah, I guess we might as well get Obamacare because yeah, even though I didn't get the right insurance, they're hitting me with $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. And I go, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Slap you in the face. Doesn't exist. That's the insult. They sit there and they always lecture. They're not using the right words, blah, blah, blah. You need to use the right words. L listen, uh, I need to plug. I need to not skip breaks. I need to fund this operation. Um, we have free shipping in the store that ends today. We have the new probiotic that we believe is the best probiotic out there. Biome Defense, 23 active strains, 50 billion. Live and active cultures, InfoWarsLife.com. I'm not gonna belabor this. You know this message is important. You know that the gut is under attack, and you know we don't ever BS anybody. This is a high-quality product, and it funds our operation. InfoWarsLive.com. Stay with us. Here's Darren McGreen's report on the tax that Obama promised wasn't in the bill. And the media lied and said that it didn't exist, even though it did exist. That's how dumb they think we are. We will start by reducing premiums by as much as $2,500 per family. A system where we're going to work with your employers to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. Here's what change is saying to people who already have health insurance and the employers who are providing it will work to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. I also have a health care plan that would save the average family $2,500 on their premiums. And if you already have health care, then we're going to reduce costs uh, an average of $2,500 per family on premiums. It's time to bring down the typical family premium by $2,500. It's time to bring down the costs for the entire country. And we'll cut the cost of a typical family's health care by up to $2,500 per year. Well, Internet pioneer Matt Drudge created a firestorm over the weekend, tweeting, just paid the Obamacare penalty for not getting covered. I'm calling it a liberty tax. But a White House representative firing back, tweeting, Flat lie, no fee for previous years. Scary how much influence he once had. The Obama administration and the liberal media have told us again and again and again that there is no individual mandate that requires us to buy health insurance. If you don't want it, you don't have to buy it, right? But when tax season comes around, you better be ready to pay the price big time. And that's because if you don't have health insurance, there is a stiff 
penalty. Americans who don't buy health care coverage will face a heftier fine in 2016. There are 10.5 million uninsured Americans eligible for coverage under the Affordable Care Act. But the Obama administration expects only a quarter will sign up this year, even though those that don't could pay a higher penalty in their taxes. That's almost a 50 percent jump from the $661 fine for this year, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. It's even worse for those who don't qualify for financial aid to buy Obamacare plans. They'll pay an average of $1,450 in 2016. Now, new data from the IRS reveals that in 2014, over 8 million Americans paid a staggering $1.7 billion in Obamacare penalties. And we know that that number is expected to be even higher, much higher in 2015, 2016, and beyond. So let me get this straight. Obamacare was passed because people couldn't afford health insurance. But now, because of Obamacare, people are being heavily fined because they can't afford health insurance. Premiums are up, and some people have decided they're not so affordable. Premiums have also increased. The cost of a mid-level plan is up an average of 7.5 percent. Way more than that. It's due in part because a number of companies have left the marketplace. Fewer insurers means less competition. No, I actually didn't know the, <laughs> the penalty was that high. And if you own a business, chances are you too are getting effed over by Obamacare. First, the employer mandate, as you mentioned, kicks in for companies with 100 or more people, and some of them are going to decide this may not be worth the cost. But even those with the 50 to 99 people are going to have to make a very detailed monthly statements in terms of uh, getting ready for this thing. And the companies with under 50 people are going to have some surprises. For example, if you own two small businesses, the federal government combines those. So you may be picked up by this even if you uh, don't realize it yet. However, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And his name is Donald Trump. And his plan for health care reform is easily accessible on his website, DonaldTrump.com. It's all laid out in plain English for everyone to see. Economic and financial experts agree that it is, well, it's a rock-solid plan to repeal the incredible economic burden of Obamacare once and for all. What's your plan for Obamacare? Obamacare is going to be repealed and replaced. I'm Darren McBrain, and you can watch more reports right now at Infowars.com. Great job, Darren. Hour number two is only 70 seconds away. And again, the only other point that didn't get added is this massively increases the price of health care overall. By the way, uh, this came out a few weeks ago, and I haven't really covered it yet. Just because I don't see a person that actually dedicates most of their time to try and destroy me. I mean, I'm, he's obsessed with me probably more than anybody else but Drudge or Trump. Uh, and that's Mr. Brock over at the Media Matters, former transition chief uh, for uh, Obama, uh, who is uh, over there heading up things. I mean, I have a blind spot. I, I, I mean, I don't really just care about, you know, the, the one particular spider. I want to get the whole nest. But it's been pointed out to me by folks in the office and, and others. Why aren't you covering this David Brock thing? Well, we've now had time to research it deeply. It's worse than what was even being reported. Uh, Clinton Shill, David Brock caught laundering money is the headline. Media Matters founder exposed. Pretty hardcore. And uh, it's a very accurate. Uh, Owen Schroyer. Latest edition of the InfoWars.com. A blessing to have him here. He's doing a great job. He really augments and fits in nicely with the rest of the crew. He's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. We have a special report on that. But this is just like the Clinton Foundation or the Global Clinton Initiative or any of it. This is a criminal enterprise. And they violate the laws on, quote, tax exempt groups, but that's only the surface of it. Uh, I remember the memo that came out five years ago in Politico where they said, we're going to infiltrate, we're going to infiltrate right-wing alternative media, we're going to bring them down. And, and you've seen that with Fox News. And I mean, they're not playing games. And I love the little fake, pretentious, you know, hair that sticks up, you know, eight inches above his head and all hairsprayed, you know, to make it look like he's got some giant brain. I mean, why not just wear a big alien, you know, skull cap like your Mars attacks? I mean, these people are all such delicate geniuses, but you actually try to have a conversation with them. They're just a bunch of rats. They're not even good at propaganda. I mean, I can tell you right now, these people are a joke.
The Daily Beast even asked, could anyone ever truly trust David Brock? See, they're getting ready to flush that little, uh, that little floater. That floater is, uh, you know, I think they might carve him off and throw him to the wolves. He just has that look about him, doesn't he? There's got to be some treats, you know, after, after all this. Whether Hillary loses or wins or steals it, there's going to have to be some treats. The American snacks, the American people... want to see somebody burn for all this corruption. I just popped in my head, popped in my gut, just popped into my spirit. And I think the expiration date on old Brocky boy is just about up. And I don't say that with pleasure. That's why I had men on my radar screen. Lie about me, twist, attack me on a daily basis. And again, Media Matters doesn't have a lot of traffic. It's a small news site, you know, talking point memo from the White House and the Clintons and Soros admittedly funds it I'm out of that nest but then it's regurgitated on what's left of the cable news system I mean word for word in fact we saw the propaganda that Roger Stone's the Russian spy and all this stuff uh, yesterday on C-SPAN with the FBI director being asked by Adler, and I'm not attacking fat people. I've been fat before, but you know, it's like Roger Stone said: if he says I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm involved in treason, I'm going to sue his fat ass. You got to wonder how Adler is so old and still alive because if you see him walking around, books, he is looks like he weighs 600 pounds. And I'm not attacking him for being fat. I'm just saying it's weird. Like the good die young, and he's threatening Adler. No, I'm not. I'm asking, how on earth? Can you like have somebody like my dad's dad, who was like a Golden Gloves boxing champion, like six foot four, and looked like a movie star, and was pretty damn healthy, and went on you know ten mile walks almost every day, and then his whole aorta blew up out of the top of his heart. I guess it's just genetic. But then you can have somebody like Adler just waddling around for decades in Congress, spewing BS, saying that Roger Stone's a Russian agent uh, because he dares criticize globalists that have taken over this country, and it's like, look, get back in your McDonald's commercials is the you know grimace. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, we're into the second hour of the Worldwide Broadcast. We have um, Mr. Scheuer joining us, our great reporter, who has broken down uh, the admitted crimes of the White House operative uh, Brock, David Brock. So that is coming up at the bottom of the hour. It's just important to study the criminal organization and, and to look at this key capo uh, who has the hair of a sycophant uh, twit and who has the demeanor of a scallywag and who has the political acumen of a pirate. And I want to be clear, pirates think like cancer raging through the body that just because they can rob, steal and destroy and sow chaos, they're geniuses. No, it's easy to burn a house down. It's hard to build one. It's easy to grab a kid out of their backyard and put them in your van and drive them off so the Saudis can have their way with them. It's hard to have a child and raise it and be loving. It's easy to sell crack on the side of the street corner. It's hard to build a civilization that has streets. And these people are pirates. Uh, they're looting everything, and they have the same dishonor that you would expect you see in grave robbers. But at least a grave robber's got the decency to wait till you've been dead a hundred years or so before they pull the rings off your fingers. They're doing it in broad daylight. And, and I go back to what I said last hour because I, I've been thinking about everything we look at Obamacare really is the greatest example of it. Everyone I know has seen their premiums go up 50% to 100% to 150%. Who it really hit was my parents who might use their insurance once every 10 years. I think my mother hadn't used hers in like 20 years. It was ridiculous. 
And as soon as Obamacare passed three years ago, my dad got a letter, it was 30-something percent. Another letter a few months later, another 20 percent. They know how to do it. I mean, now it's like 200 percent. So he went out and tried to find insurance and couldn't get anything that wasn't basically 100 percent what he was paying previously. Same here. I had insurance through GCN going back 18, 19 years, and Ted said, I can't afford it anymore, I'm getting rid of the pool. I went out to look for my own insurance. It was uh, about double. I don't use my insurance either. And then you turn on the news and they say, it's not going up. Everything's free. It's wonderful. Then you can keep your doctor on and on and on. And then I sit here and I go, I go around over the years and I say, do people want health insurance here? Do you want me to, you know, go in, have a group plan? I pitch in, you pitch in. Both will say, no, my wife's got it, my husband's got it, or I'm going to wing it, or no, I don't want it. Now... It's fully in place, folks, and I'll be charged $5,000 per employee, and they'll be charged, too, if, if they at least don't opt out of the health plan. And, and remember, most of these insurance companies are foreign. We've never had a tax. That's what we had. The Revolutionary War was over foreign taxes and, and, and things like that to a foreign power. You know, the globalism of that age, colonialism. That's all globalism is, is a new form of corporate colonialism. And then I was talking to, again, crew members here in the office where the first fine was, you know, a thousand bucks and three thousand. And then now it's, oh, five thousand dollars. Oh, because, you know, you make a decent, you know, middle class wage. That's a lower middle class wage. We're going to take $5,000 from you. Because, see, they don't recognize most of these other cobbled together health plans you can get that are pretty decent. They don't recognize. It's big insurance companies wrote this to make you get it from them. And then when they're done making money off of it a few years, they're just going to turn loose and then deny the whole thing, watch it collapse and go to single payer. And then it'll make prices go up even more. There'll be two or three big companies left standing. That's the admitted plan. And then you've got to go to them. And Rahm Emanuel's brother, one of the architects of it, we got to find that clip. It's, it's Rahm Emanuel's brother admits Obamacare meant to create single payer. Author of Obamacare admits plan is meant to create single payer. It's Fox News. I think it's like Cavuto three years ago. He's on there in person and says, of course, it's meant to bankrupt it and to go to single pair. But it isn't even Cloward and Piven to make it socialist, which would be bad enough because that's the state running health care. Getting rid of innovation and choice. It's big foreign corporations making you get it from them. I mean, that's so unconstitutional. That's so discriminatory. That's so I called it a tax. Oh, you're a kook, it's not a tax. And then the Supreme Court says, well, Congress has the power to tax. But not an unconstitutional tax. And as soon as Obama let thousands of big companies opt out of Obamacare, the minute they did that, it was totally unconstitutional there because it's an unfair weights and measures. It's discrimination on the face. But we only think of discrimination if, you know, uh, you're black or you're white or the KKK burned a cross in your yard. The big massive discrimination is all of us having our privacy violated, all of us having to pay for illegal aliens, all of, including illegals that are already here getting killed by illegals, all of us having a ruling class that's above the law that has bodyguards, taxpayer paid for, and then we can't have guns in many areas they control. So, I, I, I mean, to me, I know that clip's easy to find. If you guys can't find it, because I know we didn't find it yesterday, go ask the other side to find it. Ask Paul Watson, because he's always the best at finding it. You guys are great, too, but I really want that clip. People say, oh, he just made that up. They never admitted it was just bankrupt everything. They never admitted it was just making a single pair. Yeah, they did. But you don't believe Gruber got up on different TV shows and said, thank God the public has no attention span. It's so stupid. <laughs> you know, I was hired to hide the fact we were going to double and triple prices. <laughs> and he does that Judge Schmales laugh that we've got Charlie Rose yesterday, we played it, it was from two days ago, from uh, Tuesday, bragging. I love that line we wrote, <laughs> speechwriters, about if you like your doctor, you can keep it. <laughs> we caught them good.
or the State Department spokesman, who is the paragon of justice and truth. And <laughs> let me tell you another good one. <laughs> you remember Gibbs, former press secretary? He's like, yeah, the drone program is public for years. It's all over the news. It's admitted. And I'm told to go on TV and say it doesn't exist. And then the anchors all laugh with him. It's, it's fun. It's fun to rub your nose in it. It's, it's fun to do that to you. It's, it's fun. It's fun to have the Pope come out today, Infowars.com, and say that any journalists that, you, that engage in conspiracy theories, quote, conspiracy theories are terrorists. Conspiracy theorists are terrorists. Next level. All right, I'm going to come back and actually get to the State Department news where they're threatening to launch terror attacks inside Russia. And, of course, the State Department's also come out and said in writing, and so has NATO, that they will launch military physical attacks if they think from the territory of Russia or any of its allies, cyber attacks come. And that was first in writing. People didn't believe it six months ago when we covered it. Then they came out about a month ago and said it on the news. Samantha Powers and others. So... We have the official press briefing saying, oh, if you don't get out of Syria, terrorists are going to hit you. We're going to break that down. Uh, before I go any further, we have storewide free shipping that will end today. Uh, the sale on Supermail and others has ended, uh, but the storewide free shipping uh, ends tonight uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. And I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, we now have the new amazing probiotic. Uh, your front line of defense has arrived. The very best probiotic that we believe has been produced. Uh, they have some that people get from, you know, medical facilities and things that are 200 300 400 dollars Maybe those are better. I don't know. But this is this is what they do in Europe. This is the cutting edge. Took us seven years. Uh, again, I was with the group five years ago, but he was working on it for two years. Very, very, very neurotically, you know, almost like Tesla, but I mean, I mean, in a good way to come up with this. It's InfoWarsLife.com. It's $68. Uh, it's refrigerated. It's shipped to us from the factory refrigerated. It's refrigerated here. We ship it to you with an ice pack. It doesn't lose a lot of it, he says, if it gets hot, but it keeps its maximum strength uh, if you do keep it in the refrigerator. So that's recommended. Infowarslive.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. You can always get free shipping when you sign up for auto ship. Sign up for 14 days, 30 days, 60s, 90. Uh, and then, you know, for stuff that's perishable or stuff that you use, stuff that, uh, you know, obviously you need to buy on a routine basis like our Wake of America coffee or vitamin B12 or lung cleanse or DNA force. There's no reviews yet for um, the, the new Biome Defense Probiotic from InfoWarsLife.com, and that's because uh, obviously it just started shipping out yesterday. It got in last week in the refrigerated area. It started shipping out yesterday. InfoWarsLife.com, 50 billion live and active cultures, 23 probiotic strains. InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com is again the umbrella site. And don't forget the new free app, InfoWars Live, with video feeds and more at Infowars.com forward slash app and spread the word about the app. That's the Infowar. I've got several articles here in front of me that illustrate the corruption we're talking about and that any Bernie Sanders class envy type person who doesn't like crony capitalism should understand. This is Bloomberg. I have another one here that Hillary gets 400 to 1 more corporate donations. 400 to 1 Corporate donations, big corporate donations than Trump gets. 400 to 1. Here's an article out of Bloomberg. Hillary Clinton is outraising Trump 20 to 1 among billionaires. And, and the liberal Bloomberg that wants your guns, he sells this like it's a good idea. Like this is something to be proud of. See, Trump's a loser. Big corporate money is running from him. Oh, I thought we didn't like big corporate money. I thought we wanted it out of politics. I thought we wanted special interest out. I thought we wanted foreign interest out. That is the biggest campaign point for him, that special interests are running from Donald Trump. Because they're all about making special deals that cut out their competition and shutting down our economy. But they don't care. They want to control it and dictate the terms of our economic surrender. That is the plan. You don't think they didn't know Obamacare would totally bankrupt our economy further? And then the, the central system could dictate who was under it and who wasn't? It's written open-ended? The power to tax is the power to destroy. And now the Internet's going under U.N. control. And the censorship's already beginning. We're, what, two days out now?
People say, where's the censorship? I don't know, where's Michael Savage? Where's all these websites getting shut down? Most people I know are having their Facebook and Twitter shut down just because they promote Trump. It's already going on and it's getting worse incrementally. <sighs> but it does, it's okay, the Trump is evil because the Pope said so. And he also said journalists that promote conspiracy theories like the fact that Hillary's sick are terrorists. And he also says he's disgusted by Europe being Christian and not welcoming more Muslims. I mean, these are quotes, folks. And you're like, is that a Christian leader said that? Yeah, that's, he's called the Pope. Articles with the quotes, links to Catholic newspapers, his statements on Infowars.com. Who's the radicals here? I've got a stack of videos I haven't even played of white people in Charlotte and other areas being beaten and begging and pleading. And then the mainstream news says, well, they're white. They shouldn't have been down there. Shouldn't have been in the parking garage. And these are white people saying this because they're suckering everybody. They think it's so funny. I want to go out to break. We won't have time to air all of it. This is the State Department. Threatens Russia with more body bags, attacks on Russian cities. And this is a veiled threat because we have Bandar Bush, the Saudi ambassador to the UN, again, a few years ago. The article's on Infowars.com. Saudis threaten Russia with Olympic terrorist attacks unless it abandons Syria. That's a Steve Watson article. Here is the... John Kirby, the spokesman for the State Department, uh, threatens Moscow with terror attacks. But, oh, if you don't let us get the extremists out of Syria, they're going to come and attack you. Yeah, because you run them and put them there. And General Flynn and others exposed it. You've removed Flynn and removed the other generals now. And our military, to a certain extent, is now aiding ISIS in air raids. And the military is really upset about it. And Obama and everybody keeps claiming we're wanting a military coup. You guys have already cooed the country, okay? It's kind of hard for us to have a coup, okay? And I'm just looking at the American people asking, do they deserve to be under this? I mean, if you want to get looted and you want to have $5,000 fines for the free health care, okay, that didn't free, and you want to, you know, arrest the press and, you know, uh, okay, this is what you want, this is what you get. But let's go out to break with uh, the State Department, starting more stuff with Russia. Extremist groups will continue to exploit uh, the the vacuums that are there in Syria. Yeah, when you let them in here, let them in here. We got to give our rights up. Um, which that will include no no question uh, attacks against uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities, um, and uh, Russia will continue to send troops home. Uh, in body bags. Here at the State Department, the uh, Secretary is still committed to a, a diplomatic solution. Uh, there are other options uh, that don't revolve around the act of diplomacy. Looking at the events that followed the ceasefire, how is it fair to say that Russia is solely responsible for the failure of this deal? Because, and we've said this I many, many times. Uh, I can't handle it. I'm going to come back and play the rest, but just listen to me very carefully, folks. These are all non-military people or people that haven't been in a bunch of combat. I mean, this is just historic. They've had all these weirdos on Fox News, CNN, you name it. They keep saying, watch out, Russia. We'll send you back lots of body bags. That, that doesn't make people back off. It makes people dig in. That's what I mean. There's some blind spots with these evil people. But, you know, I, I say non-military, also just psychopaths think this, because Hitler thought bombing British cities and targeting children would make the Brits give up. It made them go 100% in favor of total destruction of Germany. I mean, I, these people are crazy. I mean, they're crazy. We're Adam Troyer is going to be riding a shotgun with us a little bit in the next hour. Then Dr. Steve Pachinik, always interesting, is going to pop in about the state of the counter coup against the globalist. I don't know if we're going to have time to air your whole report. It's excellent. It's up on Infowars.com. We're going to talk about some of it live here on air. Uh, David Brock of Media Matters has basically been caught laundering money. Uh, you might celebrate the fact that this known anti-American, anti-free press uh, pusher of actually shutting down the free press. This is an open authoritarian. This is a naked, book-burning, knuckle-dragging, pseudo-intellectual, fake leftist uh, cretin. And I, uh, I mean, he's made it his life's work to destroy myself, the free press, Drudge, uh, Donald Trump. I don't, I don't attack this guy because he just attacks me. In fact, I don't spend a lot of time on him, but I'm only covering this to show the lawlessness of a Justice Department that will now set the precedent. You see the arrogance to let Democrats do anything they want, commit any crime.
the FBI director testified yesterday, we have the clip coming up, that, yeah, though they never had any intent of indicting anybody. They were all given immunity up front to give them the immunity, not to rat out somebody above them, but to cover them because they'd been doing the cover-ups for Hillary. So this is basically a type of pardon that uh, the Justice Department and Loretta Lynch. So why not have Clinton meet on Loretta Lynch's airplane? Why not engage in all these you know things that are uh, absolutely uh, violations of ethics and laws? So we're going to be talking to you here in just a moment. I want to finish up, though, uh, with this clip from the State Department threatens Russia with more body bags attacks on Russian cities. This is a refrain uh, that I, 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 or a maxim, they, they say a lot. You know, that, oh, you better watch it. We'll kill more Russians. No, the Russians know in Ukraine, they know in Syria, right on their back door. And they know with, with 888, with what happened in Georgia, that the West is starting these fights. I and mean, we have the emails from Soros. Hell, he goes on CNN and says he spent billions to do this. The State Department says they spent $5 billion, And then they spend it and say, oh, you're a Russian agent. Uh, if our government said, let's attack Brazil, I'd, I'd say don't do that if Brazil hadn't done anything. I mean, I mean, if they said attack Antarctica, I'd say, why? I mean, what did the weather station do to us? You know, it's like, it's called ethics. You know, it's called, you're globalists that have occupied my country. You've taken it over. You can chime in on this if you want before I go this clip, uh, Owen. But it's frustrating to see my face up there next to Trump's, next to Putin's, saying I'm a Russian agent, and that's all over the news. And Hillary, you know, in her speech, talks about the deplorables and, you know, talks about the dark heart Alex Jones and the Godfather giving him the orders, and him and Trump is 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 is, is Vladimir Putin. A lot of sociopaths people say, "Oh, isn't it great? Your name's out there. You're real big." And I'm like, "No, it's not hurting me that she's attacking me. That the press goes along with stuff that is 20 times Joseph McCarthy stuff. I mean, you know, and McCarthy turned out was right. Um, it's it's like surreal to really sit there and mourn. It's a feeling of mourning for the country that we're overrun by foreign banks." 67% of the banker bailouts went to foreign banks and was secret. They, they, they wouldn't tell us who. They just say 67%. You can Google that. We've been taken over by multinationals. They've sold our jobs out. That's what they admit their plan is. And then they look at us and say, we're Russian agents because we're against George Soros trying to overthrow our country. But he admittedly tried to overthrow England six times. He did crash the pound once. He admits he wants to destroy nation states. He admits he wants a world government. The little, bat, the little piece of filth was a Jew that helped sniff out Jews and rob and kill thousands of them. I, I mean, the upside down weirdness of this is so uh, diabolical that I don't even have words to describe it at this point. But these people celebrate throwing it in our faces. So... Well, David Brock is another one of these little filth that you talk about. And not that, not that you need the defense here, uh, Alex, but look, I've been working here for over a month, okay? There's no way, shape, or form that Alex is influenced other than his heart, okay, and his spirit. And I could, I could honestly, I could go into the other studio and file a report how Alex Jones is a Russian agent, and he wouldn't even stop me, okay? He, he, would, he, he lets me do what I want here. So not that you need the defense. But honestly, working for you has been amazing. You were asking me about it earlier, and uh, it, it's been it's been honestly amazing. Because you've been here a month or so, I haven't really talked to you. We're all so busy. I mean, I hire people that I know have their heads screwed on straight and are promoting liberty and are Americana and want to tell the truth. And we get stuff wrong occasionally, but we really have a passion for integrity and the truth. It's, it's what we've got. And the older I get, it's like everything to me. It's almost neurotic or OCD now that I just, I just, I just want to be a good person. And these people think that's a weakness. It's not. No, that's actually a great point. It's weird. It's like trendy now to be a cuck. Yeah. Like it's trendy to worry about offending somebody and trying to be just an absolute weakling. And I mean, no offense, but I, I, I grew up in St. Louis. I can just tell the difference in the, the society and the culture here in liberal Austin. I asked, how are you doing? And you said, man, it's, 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 it's not St. Louis. It's wild. And St. Louis isn't some like conservative stronghold by any stretch. It's a pretty conservative city. But just the difference in the way people behave, the way people approach you. You have to understand, uh, this, is a, this is a colony of, of failed California. It's very, it's very strange. The difference is definitely palpable. I don't know if there was a clip that you wanted to send it to before we got into David Brock here. Yeah, let's get into Brock. I'll get back well, to Russia later. Here's, you know what, Alex? This is incredible. And this shows the bias in the media that, that you deal with, that Michael Savage deals with, that Drudge deals with, any conservative deals with. Even, it goes beyond media. Even if you're a Wall Street I mean, just a person that's promoting sovereignty. I don't even call myself a conservative. Any, any, any business. And, and, but, I mean, let's go back since you mentioned trendies. 
They have no culture. They've been trained to be alone. They've been trained that there's no family. So now whatever the new trend is, that's their family. So they're alone. They're empty. They're scared. They don't know what's happening. And then they're told your enemy are these people that want to have gardens and guns and tractors and freedom. And, you know, women think like you get ahead henpecking your male. You know, you get ahead being freaked out, fighting some weird social issue when all that's happened is you've been turned into a mental patient. So, so that's what you're experiencing. Listen, I went to high school here, a couple years in Dallas, a couple years here. Man, my grandparents are from here, my mom's parents. So I've been down here since I was a kid. You know, it was 40,000 people when my mom was here, you know, in, in the 50s and 60s in school. I, I, when I was in high school, 300,000. So it's a microcosm. Of, this, this is a UN city under munialization, under a strong cities initiative. I mean, the, the city of Austin takes its orders from the feds and the United Nations. And it's really a libertarian constitutional area. But they have election fraud since the 70s. Terrytown controls everything. It even has its own energy supply. The power goes down. This is a governing uh, city. I mean, if, if you were, you know, like this is one of the capital districts, let's say. Uh, this is a real capital, okay? This is a liberal New World Order, you know, George Soros capital. This is one of the protected zones, uh, COG, whole nine yards. So this is one reason, I guess, God put us here. Uh, but the point is, this facility is right on the edge of the backup power grid. If everything else goes down, this is still up. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that the general public doesn't know that we know, folks, okay? And, you know, the cops know I know all this, and they think, you must work for an intelligence agency. That's super secret. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I've, no the, the stuff's public if you know where to look. And, and my point is, this isn't what you think it is, folks. This fake liberal culture is a camouflage for a military cultural takeover. These are psychological warfare technicians, and their minions are like the Mao Youth Brigade cut off from reality. But I'm sorry. Let's get in now to David Brock. Who this guy is, his admissions that he wants to infiltrate and take over and destroy the free media. The media Matters says I should be shut down. They twist and lie about what we say, take it out of context. They write the talking points for MSNBC, CNN. Now more and more Fox News is picking him up. Let's get into who this guy is and his background and what's come out. Well, and, and real quick, just to put a bow on what you said. I think that the reason social justice warriors are the way they are is because ultimately they're really just selfish people. And that's why they put on this act. But David Brock, this is amazing, Alex. Now, he actually has a very interesting history. When he first came up writing books, he can actually, you can tie him directly to the impeachment of Bill Clinton. He wrote a book that wound up with Juanita Broderick getting a rape settlement from Bill Clinton. That's right. He's a mercenary. And then magically, all of a sudden, he's he's in the Clinton camp. All of a sudden, he's writing books. He got a huge book deal, half a million dollars. Well, the same, thing, the same thing happened uh, to Newsmax. So he gets a huge book deal for half a million dollars, Alex. Everyone is expecting this book to be slamming the Clintons again, another Clint uh, Clinton hit piece, and then it comes out and he's praising Hillary Clinton. He's talking Dude, about. I was offered Hillary a major Clinton. Hollywood career about ten years ago. If I would just in the future, when when Democrats got in, if I would just play ball. I mean, I was. I, you could probably be John Wayne. Oh, yeah, right. Well, the short one, yeah, John Wayne. Yeah, right. <laughs> John Wayne's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I'm, I'm like 5'11". But no, no, seriously, though, think about that. I've experienced this. It's kind of like, you know, play play ball, son. And uh, and I'm, 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 I'm talking about huge movie stars, huge TV stars. I'm talking deals. Well, and let's say that, let's say that this is what happened to David Brock. I think it, it could actually explain a lot of what you're seeing. Where we have raw evidence these these are investigative reports we've got the documents we're going to be interviewing a guy on the nightly news andrew kerr who did this independent investigation his goal is to get this guy and media matters audited and we have the documents we caught them red handed so perhaps you know if you're da if you're david brock you're sitting around oh you write this book maybe you don't get the response you think you deserve so you know what screw it I'm just going to launder money. I've got the politicians working with me now. I know I'm never going to be indicted. I know I can take hundreds of thousands of dollars out of these cam campaign contributions, and no one's going to question me. Well, we are questioning you and now, And Dinesh David D'Souza Brock. gets four friends to give money to a Senate campaign, and he goes to jail. So and let's there's go the over bias. And there's the bias right there, Alex. Isn't that amazing? A little tiny donation Dinesh D'Souza makes, you know, a couple thousand dollars. It was much more legal than what David Brock is doing. I guarantee you that. Now, he just didn't fill out the PAC form. Let's explain what Brock does, because it's just like the Clinton Foundation. So here's, here's what we have him caught Let's do document cam shots on this. For this, is, this is what we have him caught red-handed doing, folks. He's been working with the Bonnet Group, okay? Or, I'm sorry, the Bonner Group. Now, every time... Now, David Brock manages about 10 PACs that receive millions and millions of dollars in campaign contributions. Now, what happens with this money 
is it gets filtered. If we could, maybe I've got the flow chart here. You can also roll some of his report has it in it, it behind us. It, it. It, it, it basically gets filtered through all of David Brock's different super PACs. Now, there is a middleman in almost every one of these money transfers, and that is the Bonner Group. The Bonner Group takes 12.5% of every money transfer. So they that's come out the, That's the deal. lobbying legal management team. And he keeps them unregistered. He keeps them unregistered so he doesn't have to report who is actually... And last time I heard, that violates the Federal Elections Commission laws... And that is what and that is what Andrew Kerr talks about is he could not find any anything that he's doing to make this legal. And this is the same guy that has put out a huge reward. Uh, I think it's a million bucks for if we can pull it up for dirt on Trump. And he said when asked, why is this such a high percentage of the money going to the Bonner Group? He says this is what we do to motivate people to raise money. So right on their face, they're saying, we don't really care about the cause. We don't really care about the political agenda. We just want to make money. I'm here to make money, baby. I'm making 12.5% of every campaign donation you make. I want to make money. That's what David Brock's about. This guy is a total but, but it's okay because he's a liberal. Just like the Clintons gave 5.7% of the Haitian money to the charity, period. I mean, the only person worse is Bono that gave 1.8%. And then Bono... I mean, my God, can you imagine if we took money... I mean, I guarantee you, if we took money for a little Haitian kids or anybody else, we would pay the credit card fees, the transfer fees, and, and the price of the secretaries or accountants, and then I would take zero. I mean, you'd get 95% to the Haitian kids. And probably more. I mean, I mean, that is so sick. Just like Obamacare... There's no penalty, though. Everybody's getting hit with it. I mean, the way they lie to us, I, I, it's crazy. And so get this. Now, David Brock founded the Correct the Record initiative, which is paying people millions of dollars to go online and be trolls who want to find things that are said about Hillary Clinton and then try to divert it or say it's a lie or, you know, make up. Oh, that's just like thing. Lester Holt. Trump's like, no, I was always against the Iraq War, 2003, and, and, and Holt, earpiece, you can tell he goes, no, you're not. Not true. Not true. Doesn't not really matter. We have three clips of him saying it on Fox and CNN. But he said it on Howard Stern, and he even admits, he's like, look, I was on Howard Stern. It's an entertainment show. You know, I, you know, I was like, that's what Trump it. does. I mean, it, it, because they're all talking over. He's like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. Let's move off Iraq, talk about my hotel. So, but, but on the record, when the war was about to happen, when they'd come after you if you were against it, because I remember I would, they came after me calling me a communist and an Al Qaeda agent and all this crap. Now I'm a Russian agent, supposedly. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and when it really counted, Trump was right. Boom. And this is it. This is huge right here. This, this document that we have up, American Bridge 21st Century, that's a David, Bo a David Brock pack. Franklin Forum, that's a David Brock pack. Bonner Group, that is run by David Brock's friend, Mary Bonner. We caught them. This is collusion. This is the Jordan Belfort of campaign contributions. Let's explain. They're taking their own packs and then running into their own management company. So, and then on the back end, David Brock founded Correct the Record. It's now run by Elizabeth Cohen. Okay, so what does Correct the Record do? They engage in the info war. They have to pay their little minions. They have to give their little minions a little handout to go online, get tough guys getting behind their keyboard and standing up for Hillary Clinton. That's how pathetic their side of these. And by the way, we don't even have, we, we should do a report once. We've done it a few times. We can go look at the IP addresses and there'll be like 10 people commenting and it's a bot now where a person's loading the bot, but it's spamming the site and it'll be like, I was in LA this weekend and Alex was drunk in an alleyway. I've been in LA in two years. <laughs> or, I, or I had, you know, gay sex with Alex Jones in, a, in an alley. You know, it, or, and this is the stuff they're just, and I'm like, big, say whatever you want. It isn't true. You know, Alex Jones raped me, whatever. And, but this is what they're doing. We can go see these are bots. These are coming from think tanks. These are coming from PR firms. Probably coming from, you know, the Democratic version of Turd Blossom, David Brock. Uh, because, you know, you know, let's be fair here. We got Carl Rove also, with all his packs and stuff should be looked at. Uh, it's simply amazing. But this guy came out in Politico, was it four or five years ago? I think the headline was uh, Media Matters Memo uh, Leaked. And, but they say how good it is. And it says, we're going to infiltrate alternative media and Fox News and take it down. I may even have that story somewhere. That's called torturous interference. Well, he's they can pull it up. They can pull it up. Just type in... Uh, Media Matters Memo, Politico. Lou Dobbs and Don Imus were both victims of Media Matters. 
And what he does is he works with the same people, the NAACP. He works with Al Sharpton, and he claims racism, or he uses leverage in Hispanic markets to threaten Ford advertisers to try to get Lou Dobbs pulled off the air. So we got Imus pulled off the air claiming racism. Listen, they won't. And then he got Dobbs pulled off the air playing the race. Listen, I was told in confidence by a local affiliate that I've been on for a decade. But uh, because it's confidence, I can't say who did it. But but this is going on all over the country where they'll show up and they won't just threaten to pull sponsors. You know what they're doing to get us off? Well, they're just going to make a law to get you off the air. No, oh, they'll approach the station. Let's say we're number one during the day. And they'll say, we want to pay for a sponsored show with this local doctor who's never been a talk show host. We're going to pay you $500,000 a quarter. Another one, a little smaller station, uh, 200000 uh for the first six months. And they are pulling not just my show, all the local Libertarian Patriot shows. And they're taking top-rated people that have been on the air 20 years. Just, just my experience working in the St. Louis radio market, I can tell you I've, I've worked for show hosts who got pulled off the air because they talked about Obama. I have worked for show hosts who... Oh, I had them come in and tell me, we got a call. We don't know what you're up to. They, they sent... They sent the Shamrock. I'm going to skip this network break because we may not be here soon if this is continues. And this is how serious this is. Uh, Shamrock Communications, which owned like, I don't know, 100 and something newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, a couple hundred of those at the time. I'd never seen the owners any of it. They show up. The, the head CEO shows up and wants to meet with me and calls me into this boardroom and says, what the hell are you doing? I've gotten a call from the White House. You are, you are, you know, and, and, and of course this was you know, the Clintons at the time, you are not going to talk about the Clintons anymore. And I didn't even click at the time. I wasn't, and he goes, you're not going to talk about Governor Bush either. What's this business? She went over there and got arrested asking him a question. And I was like, well, Bush? And, and because it's all the same group. Mm -hmm. they, they, it, was all, it was all staged. And I'm like, uh, but, I go, but listen, I'm bringing in all this money. Uh, I'm like, the top ratings on the station, they were paying to have Howard Stern on at the time. I was there as a, I was, a, I was smart. I wasn't just a host, I was a salesman. So I went and sold, you know, years before I got a Saturday show, sold a bunch of advertisers, You're got broken. good ratings. They put me on the weeknights, sold more. I was making, you know, at like 25 years old, I was making like $200,000 a year just on ad sales. I was bankrolling, getting cameras, films, crew, building an operation. That was a lot of money when I was $25,000, $200,000 a year. And, uh, and look at what you've and, built. But the point is they got more and more pissed. And they were like, what are you doing? And I, and I guess it was because I was putting the show out on shortwave. It was getting huge ratings there. It was getting copied all over the country. My films were being handed out on VHS at military bases. I didn't realize it was super viral in the government. And they said, listen, we're going to pay you more. We're going to put you on the sports show. You're going to do entertainment. You're a really talented guy. And, and, and it's fine. You make a lot of money. You've got a few weeks to phase it out. And you're not going to be political anymore. And I'm sitting there. And the guy... Big fat guy, he sat there and he went, I know you just want to make money and be successful, pretty boy. And then six weeks later, they call me in. The BBC was there to interview me. And, 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 and this was the local manager. And he came in and he said, come here, get your crap out of here. He smiled, a little mustache. He goes, you get your crap out of here, loser. You're never going to be in the media again. He started laughing at me. I said, well, let me get my microphone. So they were so cheap. I had a lot of my own equipment. You know, back in the back for voiceovers and stuff, my own DAT recorder and stuff. And I said, I said and I knew I'd already started a show. I was already bit bigger, you know, doing the show out of my house. And I was just like, wow, what, what cruddy people. Because the old folks that had hired me that were patriots, they'd moved on to run other stuff. And it was just the way that they, 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 were, they were guilty for being evil, but they got off because they knew this was coming from the White House. Okay, and so it was the pleasure of smashing an American, crushing an American, crushing someone they knew was good looking and talented and success because he was nothing but a big fat loser. And that's it right there. They hate and all of them males. got fired six months later. They hate alpha males. I don't know why... But the trendy liberals cannot stand an alpha male. I guess that's because we're going to come and we're going to take their fake reign of truly of political terror on this country. But, Alex, everywhere I go, people tell me to say that they love you. Real alpha males want it. prosperity. We don't want to piss on that's people. That's what I'm saying, because look what you've done. You just talked about how you built this. You were, you were funneling your profits back into this operation, and now you've built this, and you're affecting change. You're, you're starting brush fires of liberty in the hearts of millions of people around this country. And... You don't see liberals doing this. What do they do? They make super PACs to steal your money. That's what liberals do. They, they pass Obamacare with foreign corporations to gang rape you and your family. And then sit on TV laughing how dumb you are. And you know, Alex, I think... And they're all against Donald Trump. They're all scared to death because, folks, they know he isn't out to screw you. Because, by the way, he doesn't like being screwed. And he sees the globalist people. He's like, there was this sweet architect... 
And, and you know, and I went and looked at that architect case. It's her main ad she runs on TV and the web. And this guy kept expanding what he claimed it was going to cost. And Trump said, no, way, I'm going with the original contract. Oh, he stuck and, oh his, my he stuck gosh. guns. You know, he didn't launch wars and kill hundreds of thousands of Christians. He didn't go and you know, destabilize Africa and Libya. He didn't engage in all these other crimes. He didn't pass Obamacare. He didn't repeal Glass-Steagall. He didn't, you know, uh, create the derivatives thing like the Clintons did. He didn't engage in all this. He didn't bomb Belgrade. No, he, a guy, I mean, architects are famous for trying to, like, get you in and jack prices up. I mean, my God, they're, they're, they're terrible. I'll tell you point blank. I mean, it's unbelievable. So my family's dealt with this. And so Trump isn't going to get screwed over, and that's why they're scared. He's got a big you-know-what for them. He wants to see America dominate because these same elites have always been screwing with him. He's always beaten them, and this is about Trump wanting to take on the big Goliath because he's an alpha male. And an alpha male wants prosperity for the tribe, and he sees the American people as the tribe, and he wants to create real unity. Go ahead. Well, and I think what just happened with Michael Savage illustrates something that a lot of That's people... That's being taken off Monday nationwide and no one will even talk about it or care. I couldn't, I can't believe that the lack of coverage that's going on with this. But who should be surprised? They won't even investigate David Brock. But I think that this can be kind of a Rosetta Stone for people where Michael Savage says something negative about Hillary Clinton and then, you know, a glitch happens or he gets preempted, whatever it is. But the Rosetta Stone here to me, Alex, is... It never comes back on. It's the fact that it all it took was one syndicate it took one satellite it took one station to pull that plug and he was off half of the networks he was on because this is the centralized control and i'm not demonizing savage this is just how this is how the radio works when you have a syndicated show like that there's one hub that usually sends out the feed to all these affiliates that's just how it works but this is how the centralized power structure works this can be an illustration to all the americans out there who don't understand how the centralized power grid works where it can be michael savage it could be alex jones it could be you. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. One station, one major satellite, whether it be any of the six. There's an internet kill switch. We told people about the internet kill switch in 2009 because it was actually in the Federal Communications Commission documents. It was coming out. It wasn't called that. We called it that. They said, "Oh, you're crazy. It doesn't exist." It was the technicians calling it a kill switch. And by the way, they don't just shut the web off. They turn into like a cable station where they only send you what they want. And the new George Soros emails, four weeks old, Google it. New Soros emails say they want to send the news to their platforms and block their opposition. Bam. I mean, boom, it's in there. Yep. He, he's already working. He said, we need to transfer this ICANN agreement to the U.N. It's happening in two days. And so what happened? Three-year-old emails that came out a month ago. So what happens? They silence the opposition. And just like in 1984, we don't exist. That's what they claim. We don't. And then exist. people say, well, it's not a UN takeover, it's a global takeover, whatever. Th they create their leftist UN as the new enforcement body that the left all sees as the mothership landing to save them. And then it's in the Washington Post that the UN's coming, it's going to give black people reparations. <laughs> a foreign global government body stirring up insurrection domestically with a weirdo Nazi collaborator. You can't make this up. No, it's beyond a James Bond movie. And then they're running around saying, kill the cops. The UN will save us from everything, Alex. They'll save us from racism. They'll save us from the big banks. They'll save us, they'll save us from the fluoride in the water. I think the UN, you know what? I think the UN is going to save all the problems. Why do we even do this show? It's the UN. The UN. That's right. Well, listen, folks, they want to shut down the economy and have a top-down economy where you can only buy from them. Go to farmer's markets, buy local, go to swap meets. Don't shop with the big global corporate people. Support local independent media. Support this operation. We can leverage this and defeat them. The Clinton's own internal documents that came out a few years ago show that. That's why we got free shipping. Ends today. We got the new probiotic, a probiotic out. A biome Defense at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And you can help continue to help us be strong in the face of the storm. Stay with us. Owen Troyer is our guest for five minutes. The Dr. Pachinik is popping in to cover the waterfront. We are discussing the state of the world today and what's happening and what's unfolding. I mean, look at the Pope coming out in a newspaper interview saying that journalists that engage in conspiracy theories, that means being a journalist, actually questioning government liars, uh, are, quote, terrorists and should be silenced. Well, there's no conspiracies going on. I mean, this Pope might as well just say, you know, I, I love Mao Zedong. I mean, this is what, what, how much crazier is this? I mean, this guy can come out and say, hail Satan. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, okay, call me a conspiracy theorist, whatever. Are you saying there's no conspiracies going on? Or are you saying that I don't have any facts to back up my theories? I don't understand. What are your theories? You know, are you, how can you not see there's conspiracies going on? 
Look at the look at what's happening to our economy. Look at what's happening with wars. Look what's happening with uh, on the streets of America now. Look what's happening in our government. People will admit the government's corrupt. People will admit the media is corrupt. But then when conspiracy theorists try to point out why, well, they discount everything we say. And the Pope says that, you know, we just we just don't exist. Like, for example, people would probably say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory that David Brock had to pay out eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars because he was blackmailed by his ex-boyfriend to be he was going to file a report with the IRS. David Brock pays him eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. This is a story on Heat Street. It's all over the Internet. I've got the actual court documents right here. Superior Court of the District of Columbia, Civil Action Number 2011. $850,000. David Brock paid it out to his ex-boyfriend. But the, but the controlled Ray. media said it didn't exist. Well, right, because they didn't cover it, and they'll shut you off, or they'll shut Shaf Savage off, whoever it is. And it shows what well, these are evil people. I mean, uh, it's the last few years. There's a new level of lying. And I don't know if they've gotten more corrupt or they've been let off the leash, but... Don't they know it's discrediting themselves? And I think they do. They're just getting prepared for the time we're shut down. You know, that's an, an excellent point. Do the liberals see that they're losing the battle? They pay millions of dollars out, correct the record, to send people onto the Internet and go and engage in political discourse against people that don't like Hillary Clinton, and they're still losing. And Hillary can't even get crowds. I mean, the Democrats don't like Nothing. Her. There's no crowd. We send undercover people under her campaign headquarters in different states. Amelia Weaver and others, and there's like, God, no one likes her. All the Democrats I know are voting for her. I don't like her either. I talked It's to like a there's woman. no one there. I, it's, Bernie Sanders was like 70 points ahead of her. There were more supporters of Gary Johnson and Jill Stein uh, in New York on the streets than there were Hillary Clinton. Uh, By the way, what, I told you something's wrong with Johnson. I don't know if he's got like neurological disintegration or something. But he acted like a mental patient when he was here a few years ago. And I've known the guy for a while. He's different now. Like, he, like his head was in a microwave oven. I mean, that's my I'm not talking no, I, opinion. No, I see the same thing. But now he went on TV, and they go, who's your favorite foreign president? He doesn't even know. And he just goes, I, I, uh, Mexico. Uh, what, uh, is Aleppo? Uh, uh, he goes, this is like Aleppo again. He should have said Barack Obama. I mean, he's basically a foreign dictator. He's not the U.S. president. I mean, he could have said something like, no, I like Margaret Thatcher. Or he, he couldn't. No, here, here, it's worse. He could, have, he could think of presidents. He's so robotic and trying to be so political and thinks he's mm. so smart that he wanted to pick the perfect one that was milk toast so it wouldn't make anybody mad. The, again, we're not trying to be politicians and say what you want to hear. We're trying to overthrow the corrupt globalist takeover. We want to overthrow it and take the blinders off so we can all just make real decisions. See, we're not trying to, you know, oh, if he was smart. It, it's like Carl Rove and I saw him and confronted him at, at, at the RNC airport, actually flying out of Dallas to, to, uh, to Cleveland. He's like, Alex, you don't follow the rules. And he was just ruled, that's why. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this show has more viewers and listeners than the biggest Fox shows conservatively. Five billion views on YouTube, dumb butt. Well, they don't but have he's to... so disconnected with his, his mummified brain that he really thinks being up on the big Fox Peacock thing is a big deal. It's embarrassing. Fox offered me a show, moron. Owen Schroyer is our guest. Uh, he is, of course, an InfoWars.com reporter. He's about to punch out and get, uh, get ready for the nightly news, which, uh, of course, will air at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time tonight that he's going to be hosting uh, this evening. I'm going to file a special report on that as well. We've got Dr. Steve Pachinik joining us to talk about the debate, to talk about the state of the world, but really because he's the former head of psychological warfare for the State Department and worked in other agencies, was one of the founders of Delta Force with General Boykin and others. He's talked a lot about the silent coup that's happened four years ago after Benghazi when our military refused to bomb Syria uh, and, and, and battle for al-Qaeda uh, and now ISIS. Uh, he exposed it here first. We had other guests that confirmed it, uh, like Colonel Schaefer and uh, many, 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 many others. Uh, and they, they hauled Schaefer in to Congress over what he said on the show. Uh, he has to be really careful when he comes on now. Uh, but... He actually briefed Congress uh, on the fact that about 98% of the fighters were Wahhabist. Call him Al-Qaeda, call him ISIS, it's all the same thing. SteveBachanik.com is his website. We're going to go to him in a moment. But, but I wanted to ask him just in general areas why they're celebrating on Charlie Rose saying, oh, yeah, ha, 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 you can keep your doctor. Boy, we wrote a great line on Obamacare. Or Grouper says, thank God the public's dumb, ha, ha, ha. And he goes on C-SPAN and says it again. And, and while we have the State Department head spokesman saying, you know, we lie to everybody, it's so funny, ha, ha, ha. And Gibbs saying, you know, there's no drone program, even though there is, ha, ha, ha. 
What is the psychology? I mean, I know in criminology, criminals like to brag, but I don't get this weird celebration. Or is there a method to the madness where they're just inoculating us to accept the fact that they're criminals? Uh, because it, it really looks like psychosis. Now, I only took a few courses in college on psychology. I'm not a, you know, an MD and a psychiatrist and, you know, everything else like he is. He has multiple, uh, you know, degrees from Harvard and MIT, but he's one of the top, you know, educated folks, but also in the field on these subjects. I mean, again, I found out that Chuck Yeager was a listener in Houston. He wanted to come on. That his lawyer said, oh, no, you know, don't go on there. It's too radical. All, I just think it's cool that I, you know, we got to talk to Chuck Yeager's people and found out he is a listener. But I, folks were asking me, who's Chuck Yeager? So it's kind of like, who cares? You know, the guy that broke the sound barrier, the guy that shot down, you know, 50 Nazis or whatever it is, you know, super ace, like the third best U.S. ace. People just don't even care, you know. But, but I mean, Steve Pachanek is a heavyweight. And it's not that we want to sit here and kiss his ass and say, oh, he's this big, great guy and uh, the composite character for Jack Ryan and the Patriot Games and produced a bunch of big Hollywood films and co-wrote a bunch of Tom Clancy's books, blah, blah, blah. It's that we'll sit there and look at some candy-ass, lying, you know, white-shoe lawyer, PR flack, spew BS at us, and then, oh, it's so slick, it's so cool because there's a... State Department insignia behind him, but then when the people that have actually overthrown countries are on, notice the media doesn't ever cover when Pachinik's on. They'll always cherry pick stuff out of context. They're scared of what he talks about. They don't like it. I had years ago, I don't know why I'm telling the story, but it's good to just get background for the listeners. I'd go on Japanese TV, British TV, or Russian TV. I still go on it sometimes, but it was RT nationwide. And they said, Oh, we would like you to come on a special 30 minute show. And I said, Okay, I'll, I'll come on that show. So I go in my office, turn on the computer, and all of a sudden, it's not a Russian TV show. It's like some government command building with this big, giant, long table with all these, like, brain bug Russians with big beards, and you can tell they're all, like, KGB, FSB. Why do you know Pachinik? How does he come to talk to you? Are you a government agent? You know, I mean, this is like something out of a movie, okay? And I'm like, realizing, I'm like, this isn't Russian TV, is it? Even this is, up. I'm like, there's like government flags in a command room. And uh, so I'm telling you, that's the weirdness. And then I had this Mossad agent, uh, who's one of the top guys in the country, whose cover is writing for a major magazine. And he gets here, and I go, I know this is really a visit from the Mossad. He goes, well, I'm sure, but I'm... Well, how'd you know that? I'm not really doing an article. I just want to see what you're planning to do to Israel. And I'm just like, I'm not against Israel. I'm not against anybody. I'm against World War III. And so... You're against... Men. And I have this I conversation. I go, look, I know not just Israel was involved in 9-11. I know a bunch of countries were. I think it's wrong that false flags are carried out. And as long as you knew it wasn't personal, he just ran off. You know, and then I had MI6 show up and all the rest of the stuff. What I want people to know is, then I had the CIA multiple times with, with reporters as cover. And then they sit there when there's no recording and just go, yeah, I'm here for the CIA to ask you to please stop doing this. And Obama would really like it if you'd stop. Well, I had one guy get on his knees, okay, and beg me to stop doing what I'm doing. Basically, because we don't want to kill you. Now, the reason I'm telling all this now is this is the real world I live in. Just as a reporter who isn't trying to destroy the country, that wants lower taxes, that wants fair trade deals. So I kind of told you up front, you know, that's the issue. You come to work here, though, you're getting on the Millennium Falcon. I mean, this is not like you're going to fight the empire in some far off corner. And the empire are these global corporations that are crony, that are anti-free market. They're attacking what made us great because they see it as competition instead of the fertile soil that's going to launch us to the stars. Well, so, who, closing comments, and I'm going to Steve. Well, who, who wouldn't get on the Millennium Falcon, honestly? And uh, but e but even I've been working here for just over a month, and I get people sending me stuff all day long. I can't even imagine what it would be like for you. But real quick, uh, back to what you said about Johnson. I want to point this out, how he didn't want to He doesn't to even say, know what planet he's on. He doesn't want to say, he doesn't want to answer the question and say a president because he doesn't want to offend anyone. He wants to be politically correct. So he just decides to look no like No language. A, just, uh, who's your favorite president, foreign president? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. So right. He would rather look like a complete fool than actually give an answer. And this is the psychological war that you talk about with Plotinik. If they can make you censor yourself... If they can make you censor your own speech, if they can make you afraid to speak your mind, they don't have to get rid of the First Amendment. They don't even have to touch the Constitution. It doesn't matter. They've, They've created a basket you. case with zero confidence. We're taught how to have no confidence, no new you know, true thoughts or liberal ideas. So tonight on the nightly news, we're going to have a bunch of stuff. You know, Obama spoke last night, too. Uh, he did a little presidential town hall. I thought that was going to be a straight-up Trump bashing session. It, it ended up not being, but he said a bunch of stuff we can expose him on. We'll talk about that. We've got more Obamacare, and I'll be doing a follow-up interview from my report 
with Andrew Kerr, who wrote a scathing report on Brock's activity. He's also done more reports relating uh, them to the Clinton and all these other super PACs. So we're going to expose him. And he said his goal is to force this into the mainstream and get Media Matters audited. Could you even imagine, Alex, how vindicated would you feel? They're not going to do it, though, because the, the IRS ad admittedly persecutes patriots. They even go after veterans groups that try to get better health care for veterans. These are the most sickening evil people because they have a competition who can be more evil. So it's like, what do we do here? I've got the documents. We've caught him red-handed, okay? David Brock is colluding and laundering money in the Democratic Party platform. We caught you, and then they're just not going to do anything. So what do we do? We take the Millennium Falcon to the next light year and fight the next battle. That's right. Owen Schroyer, great job. Anthony Cumia is going to host the fourth hour. I want to go to Dr. Steve Pachinik now. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Alex. And, 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 Doc, I didn't mean to go into that whole rant earlier about you or me or any of this. I just don't think people understand this isn't a TV show that's like entertainment. This isn't fiction. Uh, the general public needs to know exactly what's going on here. And the fact that you and I and others are having such a big effect against this criminal, piratical group uh, of criminals shows that they're not invincible. In fact, they're quite weak. And the fact that Hillary's coming out naming us, the fact that they're all panicking, the fact they're claiming I'm a Russian agent has really, really uh, a window, I think, into the fact that these are a bunch of unconfident crooks who can be brought down and our republic can be restored if the people just take it to the next level. What do you say to that, sir? Well, I want to thank you and all the people who work with you and, of course, the audience that's been with us for, what, over 14 years. And I think they, you and they deserve most of the credit. My, my input is basically to say, look, this is my experience. This is where I want to reality test some issues. And as you know, sometimes I make a prophecy and often it becomes true. But it's not a question that I'm just throwing it out in the air. It's based on a lot of the issues that I know, the past experiences. But it really resonates with the American public. Now, we are at a point where we do have what I think the most effective revolution we've had in over 40 to 50 years without fighting, without guns, without weapons. And I see this all over the United States. I just traveled over 4,000 miles. And you can hear the rumbling. You can hear the, the fact that people are questioning Hillary. They're now talking about her illness or Parkinsonism. And then you find out, as a result of all of the things that we've done, including you and the audience, then Michael Savage, uh, Dr. Michael Savage, whose Ph.D. is in ethnocentric medicines or ethnic medicines, which is a Ph.D. program, was thrown off the air on WABC for simply reading the, the diagnosis that I made, Dr. Drew made, and a bunch of others, a doctor. Yeah, he has one of these rare, I mean, I mean, almost medical degrees in its classification, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's the original apothecary, and that's right. a pretty high-level yeah. degree. He's a really smart guy, 400 stations. But he, listen, he's, he's suddenly radio silent. He told me last week in front of the crew here on Skype in a break, he said, Alex, I don't know how long I'm going to be on the air. CBS is really censoring me. I want to air this interview on my show today, but 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 they're not letting me. And he was really upset. So the point is, this really shows how desperate they are, and that's what I'm getting at. We have the that's Pope correct. coming out, and, and, I, and I hate to interrupt you, but i got to toot your horn. You were on two weeks ago, and you said that Tim Kaine, who had attacked me that very day, saying I'm this horrible, evil, deplorable, you know, racist person with no evidence, her, her VP was basically a Jesuit operative, and that their failed system was feeding Hillary's agenda. The Pope came out in a Catholic newspaper, it's on Infowars.com, and word for word quoted Hillary and Kane about de the deplorable conspiracy theorist media are terrorists, these are quotes, and should be shut down. For me, that's incredible proof. Is he getting talking points from them, or are they getting them from him? Because well, this is word for word. Ways. Let, let me... Uh let me reiterate what I've said to you and what I've written for over 10, 15 years. I knew the Pope when he was the Jesuit director under the Argentinian Colonel uh, a coup, a military coup, which killed thousands and thousands of people by eliminating them completely. I was asked by the Argentinian military in the late 1970s during the Carter administration to come over to Argentina and assist the colonels 
in basically dealing with what they called communists. Now, what they meant by communists were innocent citizens as well as innocent Christians, primarily Catholic priests, Catholic nuns who were herded together underneath the, the military colonel uh, 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 supremacy of Argentina with the blessing of the Pope. The Pope was then the director of the Jesuit uh, council in Argentina. And in fact, he, didn't he, the word is they even used confession to, to have a list that was handed over. Well, he not only helped and worked with the colonels and allowed many of the colonels to kill and abscound with Jesuit priests, two of them who were arrested and eventually tortured, and, and sanctioned the torture and the death of four other nuns. So this pope is exactly like Pope, uh, uh, the one who was a former Nazi, and, and so on and so Rat forth. Singer. My interest is not so much in the pope, but what you said, Alex, and I didn't realize that he was stupid enough to literally take the words and to try to rationalize the fact that Cain, of course, was a Jesuit. The reason is I treated these guys. I used to treat them. Sure, well, you said it looks like Hillary is being run by Jesuits to a certain extent. Well, and, But, I mean, I now we have them word for word, it. sir. What I'm saying is they are word for word copying each other. So they're in lockstep at this point. Correct. But what's happening, Alex, is let, let me get it clear. Sure, go ahead. Sorry. It's exactly what you said. It's not a question of malevolence only. It's a question of incredible stupidity and a lack of understanding of how self-incriminating both Tim Kaine was because he was, in fact, working with Negro Ponte, a very good ambassador, but at the same time a strong operative with our CIA. We had a very strong presence in Honduras. I flew there and then went on to Noriega. The generals in Argentina who asked me to come forth, I have to thank a Secretary of State Vance under Jimmy Carter, who said to the generals that if Dr. Pachenik doesn't want to work with you, he will not work with you. And not only that, I went up to the Secretary of State and asked him, could I work against them? And I did. And eventually we were able to get rid of the colonels and eventually get rid of the, the, the Jesuit director who then went on to become the Pope Francis. Amazing. So what does this signify? It I mean, you brought it up, so it must be important. happening, Alex. Alex, and let me tell the audience, it's not about me or people like me. It's that there is, there are people in this country, in this wonderful country, and all over the world, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, who stand up to the overriding suppression and, 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 and terror of any system. In Argentina, people were disappearing night and day. The Jesuit director, this, the, 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 at that time he was cardinal, was so frightened and so compromised that he had nothing to say and in fact was collusive. In the real world of civil law and even Catholic law, this pope should be indicted for collusion and murder. That's what I said. I've said it for 30 years and I will not step away from that. In fact, what happened is I created the Braille Rabbit in that Jesuit pope and in fact, Tim Kaine stuck to it, and Hillary, because they don't really understand the history of how the Jesuits worked for us both on the CIA side and as well on the, on the theological side. At the same time, Hillary has been so porous in her uh, reality check and so vulnerable that, in fact, the reason I called up and I wanted to talk to the audience was that I was somewhat disappointed with Trump because— well, That's my next question. Uh, what what do you make of that performance? I know he was advised. I was not happy. And the reason I'm not happy is the same reason I called up many months ago to say Manafort has to go. And in fact, I will categorically state it again, and Trump will not like this, neither will his group. He cannot have the group that he has now. General Michael Flynn is a great DIA. He's a defense intelligence agent, but he is not a psychological warfare. Well, he's not the one advising. Uh, he, he's basically yeah, trying to... No, I mean, there's no one there who understands, who has had the experience, and I'm going to say I've had it in two different administrations. No, I know. You've overthrown countries and propped no, no, them up. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm I understand. So what, how would you about. advise Trump? How, what would you say? No, no, I, no, no. What I'm asking now, I can't advise it. What I can tell him to do strategically is very simple. He has to get rid of the people he has there. He starts with a group of three and ends up with two 
two dozen people. When I worked with Baker and Roger Ailes, Ailes knows this better than anyone. You need to know the psychological dynamic of Hillary working in a very constrained period of time, over 15, 20 minutes, and how she baits him. At the same time, he has to know how vulnerable she is. So what's her vulnerability? The fact of the matter is that her agenda and resume is a complete vulnerability. Sure, I'd bring up all the failed states. I'd bring up ISIS killing Christians by the hundreds well, of thousands. Well, not only that. It's, it's even more basic than that. You know, he started to do this when she said I was a senator. Then say, in fact, well, you claimed, you, Hillary, claimed you would bring in 200,000 jobs. Over eight years, there were no job increases. As a matter of fact, there was a 25% decrease in jobs. Trump didn't say that. Instead, he got hooked, and she baited him right into uh, talking about ad hominem. about. Sure, but in fairness, Dr. Pachanik, what do you make of Lester Holt? 40 yeah, plus times relevant. interrupting I, the, I the signals. With, with all due respect, Alex, I had two different candidates who had all kinds of intermediaries. The, the key to any strategy in the debate is to take control of your own dynamic, which he has not. No, I agree. I, listen, I ignore whatever they're saying and just cover the facts and have the energy and show that I'm dominating them. That's correct, but you're a little bit different in the fact that you do have this history of consistency, you know what you're talking about, and you don't have to deal with an interloper. In this case, uh, Trump is really coming off of his own narcissism. He can't do that. There is no one there who can put him in, in check and say, look, this is what you have to do. These are the steps in a psychological warfare when you're dealing with somebody over a five-minute period period of time. It's not the same as you're dealing with them over three years or four years. He doesn't have anyone like that. He's hired all kinds of people who've had no experience whatsoever. Oh, I agree. He's got a bunch. I mean, these so many people he's got working for him. I mean, I, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Answers. What did they ever build? I, I mean, I, I mean, they do not know what they're doing. No, I mean, James Woolsey comes on to support Trump. I knew James Woolsey. He was a disaster as a CIA director, a complete disaster. The man never even saw Bill Clinton for two and a half years. Then he was a neocon who wanted 9-11. The man is, is, is disaster. He's not good in intelligence. He's totally oriented to war and profiteering. He, he's a second-rate man. The issue here isn't about who he can put on board and who likes him or doesn't like him. The issue is very simple. It's like a building. Do you have a strategy? Do you have a tactic? Implement it systematically. He has no one there who can do it for him. Michael Flynn cannot do it for him. General Kellogg cannot do it for him. The woman who's in charge can't do it for him. He has no one there. It was not an accident that I was called in by Bush Sr.'s people, Baker and others, and Hadley and new administrations, because they knew exactly what it is that one has to do. It's not a fanciful game. It's very simple. It's strategy of psychology. They're not trained in psychology. So I'm warning Trump again. He came to the forefront because people like you and I and the audience supported him. But I can assure him that that audience is getting very disappointed with sure, him. Sure, he has to continue to be a populist. This isn't where you just become a politician. No, and now that but you're that's the... not only that. He has to be... He, Alex, he has to be able to articulate what he's Well, let's come back then and spend five minutes. You're going to be Donald Trump with Hillary. What you say to her. Then I want to get another geopolitical things that are taking place and more with Dr. Steve Pachinik. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is our website. They're trying to censor it. Spread that link to everyone. Download the free app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I use the word too much, but it really is the best word. It is surreal. It's like you've read history. You've seen examples of tyranny, hundreds of millions killed by out of control authoritarian governments, fascists, communists, you name it. The 20th century, and you see tens of millions killed in the last 16 years. And a warm-up, a, a, a preparation, and most analysts agree, for something much more dangerous than the last century. And all these articles now in the Hollywood Reporter, the London Guardian, about elites all running to New Zealand because of what they think is imminent collapse. I don't know what's going to happen. I want to stabilize things. I don't want to have a civil war. And I see George Soros running around trying to start race wars. His own emails come out and the U.N. saying they're going to, you know, have reparations for black people so the U.N. should run things. And... Loretta Lynch says, I'm going to have the U.N. run local police. I mean, this is crazier than I thought they'd try. And I want Dr. Steve Pachinik to have a few minutes here to talk about what, how he would advise Trump, where he sees his election going, 
What happens if Hillary, let's war game this, does get in by fraud or whatever, and she clearly looks insane half the time. I want to get his expert opinion on what he thinks is wrong with her. There's a lot to cover. But this is an incredible time to be alive. A very, very incredible time to be alive. Before I go any further, free shipping on all products at InfoWarsStore.com ends today. Uh, we have the new probiotic, seven years uh, of uh, development and design. This is the cutting edge of what's going on in Europe. Doesn't have the fillers, uh, 25 billion live. Well, the, 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 the extra strength version is the first one we actually have out. So it's 50 billion live. And then you also have all the other great things that are involved in it. The 23 strains, InfoWarsLife.com. Infowarsstore.com. We're really, really proud of this. But regardless, it funds our operation. You get a Hillary for Prison shirt. You get a Molon Lambe shirt. Come and take it shirt. You get a you know package of non-GMO heirloom, open pollinated seeds. It's great to plant with the kids. Uh, it's all there. Infowarsstore.com. Infowarslife.com. And we're building this media operation with your support. And it's about taking action not just physically or not just with your spoken word or what emails you send or how you vote, but also in the media you support. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. And it's not one of our big sellers, but I, I just love non-GMO you know, GMO heirloom seeds and things. I love gardening when I have time to do it. And we have the biggest selection that you're going to find online of the very best non-GMO heirloom seed vaults and systems. And we've got now more than 20 different companies and brands that we've personally tested out and tried that are very affordable, high quality, uh, from fruit trees down to basic vegetable packages to uh, you name it, it's all there. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, water filtration, air purifiers, uh, just whatever's the very best, you know, the newest jumper cable system with 10 different ports to jump your car 14 times. It's the third the size of a briefcase. I mean, just whatever's cutting edge of the best, we've got it. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I want to thank you all for your support. Now, Dr. Steve Pachinik's Twitter is Twitter.com forward slash Steve Pachinik. You really want to follow him there to get the amazing, uh, incisive, uh, uh, you know, reports. I mean, just looking at him two weeks ago saying, ah, it looks like the Jesuits are trying to run this show right now. Nobody's saying that. But you study it, you look at it, and then you see the Pope says stuff, and a week later Obama says it word for word, the same script, and then vice versa. I mean, this is like creepy. This is very, very creepy. Uh, and I don't know any Catholics that like this Pope. I mean, this guy is the anti-Pope at every level. But that's the type of stuff. Tim Kaine, liar. Well, let's put it back on screen. I'll give folks a headline. Tim Kaine, liar. Jesuit CIA operative with dark past. Boy, you said it. And the guy just just is like a flaming candy ass. And it just seems to go with the territory with these type of sellouts and 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 and, and sycophants. Now, humor me, Dr. Pachenik. Before you get into Trump and, and where you see this going and what's happening, I didn't bring up you know the Russians when I'm supposed to do an interview with them bringing you up. Or I didn't bring up the CIA, you know, visiting or whatever, you know, to act impressive on air, obviously. I want folks to know how real this is and that a show like this could actually have them all shook up and not knowing what to do and Hillary attacking me. I think that speaks to weakness, not our strength. And so I was just wanted you to talk to specifically the battlefield right now globally, who some of the factions are and where you see this going. Let's just hypothetically say Trump doesn't get in, which I think he will if he you know, plays his cards right. He's on the wave of a populist movement. But like you said, if he starts waffling, why does it matter? Maybe it's better Hillary gets in and she's collapsing, looks completely mentally ill, though that's dangerous. Uh, maybe that totally discredits these people once and for all. They were so arrogant, they forced another Bush slash Clinton dynasty in. I, I mean, just how do you see the tea leaves, basically, is what I'm getting at. And why is the power structure openly saying now they want to censor everything, which seems to be a, a, to be a really desperate move, showing they know they're in major decline? Well, I think you've said it very clearly, Alex. The, the power structure, not only here but all over the world, is, is unified in one element. They are afraid of this. We're outliers. We're the black swan. You were the black swan on radio and on the, and the Internet. Ironically, I was the black swan in writing about cyber terrorism, cyber nation 20, 30 years ago under the Clancy franchise. So what they're afraid of is that the words we speak, they, they're quite accurate and better, often, more often,
often than not, we tend to be very accurate in our predictions. I don't say my predictions, but our predictions. As you said, a year ago or many years ago, I brought up the issue of the Pope repeatedly. I accused the Pope as a physician of complicity in the murder and torture of Catholics in Argentina who disappeared. Now, that was over a year and a half ago. That's correct, as well as the Jesuits and nuns who were killed by the current. And now he's speaking probably about you. That's not anything. When he says that's conspiracy that's theorist anything. journalists must be shut down. I Catholic, and I went, attended Catholic churches in, in Albi, in, in Toulouse. But the second part is that I accused the Clinton administration and the Obama administration of such massive corruption that James Comey is sitting there like a fool, a moron, and a pathetic idiot who can't answer a simple question that's given to him. Why did you uh, uh, offer impeachment to criminals, and including Lint, uh, Merrill, uh, the, the woman who's, uh, what's her name? No, not Loretta Lynch, but the, the chief of staff for Hillary, who was also in his law firm. So the corruption of Lynch, the corruption of Brennan, the corruption of our military, all lies within the system of Obama, Clinton, and the Bush. Sure, Cheryl Mills or, or Schultz? Cheryl Mills. Cheryl Mills was in the same law firm as Comey. He should have recused himself. He and her, she were in the same and, and, and as a psychological Andy warfare expert, one of the office. leading ones out there, Patricia, just stop for a moment, daughter. That's what I mean. As a top you know, psychiatrist looking at this, because as a layperson, it's like emperor's new clothes. Don't they get there burning themselves down in front of everyone? Yes, but with all due respect, Alex, what happens when you have massive self-destructive behavior? That's what you're seeing. Comey was put on the spot, thank God, by our congressional uh, operatives and our congressmen who said correctly, why are you offering immunity? Why have you not followed through? And Comey cannot answer the questions. And he can't answer it because he's lying. He knows he came to that position as a result of collusive behavior, compromising his integrity and compromising the integrity of the FBI. John Brennan compromised himself long ago. He was known as a secondary operative. He was really an analyst. In the intelligence community, Brennan was not considered very bright. So who, well, who brought him up? The Bushes and the Clintons because they could manipulate him. Remember, a system of politics depends on vulnerability and pandering, not on competency. You and I have to depend on competency. The American public has to depend on competency. They don't pander. That's right. We've got to make our kids lunches. We got to pick them up. We got to pay the bills. Yeah, we got to. We got to. We got to change the cat box. We got to take the dog for a walk. We got to pay the taxes. We got to show up. They just sit up there. And why do you think? I asked a question earlier. I have all these clips we can play, but I'm sure you've seen them. This new thing where they go on TV and laugh about how dumb we are and admit they're lying to us and celebrate it on Charlie Rose, celebrate it on C-SPAN, celebrate it and say, thank God we're dumb. What is that? Well, all that is, is is fear and a secondary issue. It's it's a distraction from the main issue where they realize they're highly vulnerable. If a so that's them like acting Alex competent. Jones, that's them whistling past the graveyard. Audience. Is that them whistling past the graveyard? Well, it's not only whistling past the graveyard. They're in the process of self-destructing, and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to strike out. In the same way that Trump should have hit Hillary about her father, who was a Jew, didn't like the fact he was a Jew, changing his name to Rodham, was a man who abused her physically and mentally, as well as a mother, and never made a penny. Yeah, let's talk about the CIA file on Hillary, uh, her real background. Let's talk about that. Well, I, the CIA file on Hillary is that I wouldn't be surprised, quite frankly. I don't want to say this again. We don't want to get the Justice Department in here, but let's just let's just not play games. Let's just get it up. Well, there's no playing games. The problem. No, I'm not saying you are, but let's. As a psychiatrist, what do you? I mean, we know about her history. We know her dad was a mob boss in Chicago. We know he was Jewish. You're you're half Jewish, and nothing wrong with that. Point is, she's not. She's ashamed of that. I'd be proud of it if I was her. And let's talk about why she's so mentally ill. She's not. She's ill right now because she came to the point in her life where physically and mentally she has self-destructed. She has Parkinsonism. It's 
an issue of neurological damage. It's been there for years, four to five years. Columbia Physician and Surgeons has the record. They have the neurological evaluation. They have the CAT scans, the MRIs. She picked a little doctor who attended my Cornell Medical College, and she lied, this doctor. But Columbia has all of the records. We don't see MRIs. We don't see the CAT scans. And she's trying to lie her way to the presidency. She may get there because if Trump fails, he'll fail. Because We're going to get to that, I promise, in a moment. But, but specifically then... Let me just ask this question because I thought it's so interesting. I mean, I mean, that happened. In fact, some of the people were in the office and they saw it. They're like, this is a TV show. Why do you think the Russians, before I was never allowed basically back on RT again unless I was a guest on a, another show or, say, a documentary interviewed me? I don't care about RT. Big deal. The point is, is they want to be on all the time. And then after there was this meeting and it wasn't RT and it was like this Russian government and people interrogating me for like 20 minutes. And I was just like, this is an interview. They kept asking about you. And then they basically thought I was some operative or something, which I'm not. I'm proud of the fact I'm organic, folks. I'm proud that I haven't been part of some agency. I'm not saying it's bad if you've been. They were obsessed with you and really were acting like you were Godzilla or something. Well, here's the problem. They, the Russians knew very well that I worked in the Soviet Union to take them apart from the 1960s, thanks to Nixon, where I was sent overseas and started working in the Russian Soviet psychiatric hospitals. I was taking out uh, Christians, Anabaptists, and Baptists out of these psychiatric hospitals and beginning to take down the Soviet Union. Putin knew this. I mean, he was not there at the time, but Andropov knew this, the KGB knew this. They knew all about my work. Why is that I, so important, getting people out of countries? Because I know that was... Because it was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. I had developed a plan which systematically was able to work on the fact that there were Christians who were defying the uh, atheist ideology of communism, and in turn, they were put in psychiatric hospitals. So I had the credibility as a psychiatrist to go in there, and I literally commoditized these Christians by saying to one of Stalin's men, who was the last man available, a doctor, I will give you Wang computers, X number of Wang computers, for this person, that person, and that person. They all turned out to be major Christians. In turn, we began to take down the system little by little. Oh, I get it, by spreading the word that the Christians could reactivate inside Russia. Correct. But the second part was the fact that I knew their KGB was highly compromised, and I could buy off many of their operatives, including the GRU, the KGB, and other elements, by helping... It was just weird the because family. they were interrogating me, and I said, this isn't a TV interview, is it? And they're like, no, Pachinik, why does he talk to you? What is Pachinik doing? <laughs> and, and, and so I thought it was very, very interesting that they're definitely obsessed with you. Well, they are obsessed with me. Putin, to this day, wants to know how I took down the Soviet Union, and he's not going to know that. But I do have respect for him in terms of the fact he has to do what he's doing, but he cannot continue in Syria to kill those people. That's a warning to Putin. That's the beginning of the end of Putin. And I'm saying to him very clearly, you have problems within the Kremlin, you have the FSB, you have the SUV, and you know very well that we can put them into spin. And that means that Putin understands that he can't trust anyone. And that's exactly what we did or I did years ago with several of Brezhnev and Yeltsin and others who were involved in the Soviet Union. It is not hard to take down a... Sure, and conversely, though, the White House is, is, is scared of you and other patriots. So we're yeah, going to break, come back. We're going to go to break I and have you... Follow. Listen, I was trained by our military and by my intelligence service. My dedication is to this country. I do not ask for promotions. They asked me to be promoted to a rear admiral at 39. I turned it down. They asked me to get a pension. I turned it down. I did not have money. I wasn't being cavalier. I simply wanted to serve the country, to thank this country for taking me in as a refugee and allowing me to be everything I could be and fail. And that was the beauty of what I did. So they had no hold on me. No, no, we're going to break. I'm going to come back and get your message, what you think Trump should do in the next debate. Right. Uh, but specifically, though, the only reason we bring this up is, is, is the battlefield spectrum. I know the police are somewhat awake. The military is awake. A lot of people, I never want to make the government like the good guys, but it seems like government people are more awake than the general public. Uh, the arrogance of trying to put Hillary in, the rotting political system. How would you describe the political climate right now? It's totally corrupt. It is so self-destructive and it's irrelevant. What's happening right now is as I went through the, the, the nation, 
the different states, it was clear to me, as I've said for a long time, Washington is irrelevant. They know it, they're irrelevant. So they're trying to create false flags, which we had in Sandy Hook and all that other nonsense, in order to make themselves relevant. The FBI has become irrelevant. The CIA has become irrelevant. In fact, what's becoming more and more relevant are people who are staying home, doing cyber security, and doing internet work. What's happening in our country is we're transforming from an industrial state to an information age, and we're trying to compete with a massive Chinese economic engine, not military. And because the global has shut down our economy to sell it off, they've actually forced us to morph and create new economies the central system can't control. Well, there is no more central system. With all due respect, the globalists are finished. The beginning, and that's why I support... That's what I wanted to say. They expected this whole world government. It's already falling apart. It's every falling. E it's every falling. EU country's it's leaving. It's fallen. And one of the things you and I were successful in doing is when we supported the movement for Catalan to break away from Spain, for England to break away from EU, and for Scotland to break away from England was the beginning of the end of EU. And by the way, I'm not bragging, but I've talked to Farage at dinner and on air. He admitted that UKIP was nothing until 15 years ago, and that most of their new members were from this show, people listening over there. I don't want to give us credit, but it's actually crazy that he will tell you that UKIP got its main push from InfoWars. That's which correct. I, I wasn't kidding you. It came out of you, out of here. We, you and I kept discussing it, and you would ask me what was happening, and I kept saying I remember you said five years ago, watch, nationalist movements breaking away, the EU's done. That's and I correct. actually didn't. I thought you were being too confident. That's no, what's crazy, I, I, Doc. This is really happening. We'll be right back. And you're part of it. I know. I it's mean, amazing. Stay there. There's all these sociopaths, or people that really aren't even sociopathic, but they act like it. A lot of them they care at some level. They think screwing everyone over and only caring about what you're getting today is what a winner does. No, that's not what builds civilization. And uh, I can tell you unequivocally that they're coming to the end of their road. we got six minutes with Dr. Pachinik, then five more, and then I'm going to have uh, Anthony Cumia, who's an amazing talk show host, obviously, t uh, taken over. He got kicked off for speaking out against Black Lives Matter and the rest of it of his top XM show. But... I, specifically, you know, what Trump should do. Um, Trump, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Trump. I mean, I think he was trying to be nice to a lady, trying to be chivalrous. Uh, but the truth's the truth. Heavens may fall. You know, justice be done, may the heavens fall. And so what would you specifically do if you're Donald Trump and you're in the next debate with Hillary Clinton? It's very simple. Number one, he stated it in the beginning that in 30 years she has done nothing. And he has to go into detail to explain that she did nothing when she collated the, uh, and called together a bunch of people to create a health program. That was a disaster. The children's program was a disaster. He has to go into detail how she did go into Iraq. But more importantly, he has to go into detail how she attempted to say that she brought in jobs for people in New York State. And as a senator, she accomplished less than nothing, made huge promises, as he said, and go into detail to show that, in fact, that the end of her tenure was a minus 20. And you turned Libya over to al-Qaeda and ISIS? Absolutely. Well, so then, then she can go into ISIS. He said it correctly that al-Qaeda and, and ISIS was the result of her a presence in in the Middle East. The fact that she has a problem in stamina has to do with the fact that she has a medical history. She's fainted repeatedly, and she her response that she can have traveled to 128 countries is not really an issue because that she she ended up with no agreement, with no treaties, and absolutely there was no result to it. And because she didn't and, care, she was just being paid by foreign powers to sell us out. Well, that's part of it, but I don't want him to get into the, you know, to get into a, a tit for tat fight. At the same time, he can explain. That he can just he say, "You're the past. I'm the future. You represent that's everything correct, everyone hates." Alex. That's exactly the point. You are the past. I am the future. You couldn't have said it better. And the, in the future, and what he can do and really stump her. Put up a PL sheet and a balance sheet in front of her, irrespective of who the intermediary is or the moderator, and say to her, please read the profit and loss statement and tell me what it means. Because not one of our presidents in the past 30 to 40 years has ever had a job.
Neither Clinton, Bill Clinton, Bush Jr., Obama. That's his strongest suit. Had a job. They act like it's a weakness that he's an outsider. That's what we need. Well, but the contrary, he has to show how important it has been to be able to read a balance sheet, a PL statement, and not defend himself the fact that he had $635 million in debt against a an asset that's worth $10 billion. He's correct, but the people don't understand that. Nor does he get to have to be caught into the tax issue. What he Exactly. Has Most of my company is in the black, but there are areas that are in debt because that's part of the plan to pay it off. I well, mean, that's what you do. But the general public doesn't understand that. No, but you can't teach the general public everything. What you can show is that Hillary has no idea of business, and he has to go into that systematically. Yeah, she just goes and raises taxes and gets more money. I'm sorry? She just goes and just takes people's money. Well, she has no idea. She has no real strategy. In fact, her whole team is really nothing more than sycophants, whom I've known for 20, 30 years, second second tier quality. They're not really very good. They're Al Gore spinoffs or they're Carter. All right, stay there. Five more minutes, sir. Steve right, So the issue here is then in far We got to go to break. We got to go to break. Back in 70 seconds. So five more minutes on the other side. I want to ask you to put a bow on this, but but what, what will Hillary do if she gets in? 39 days out, folks. Fourth hour coming up in five more minutes. And then Anthony Cumi is coming on. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones. Last time he was on, he quoted uh, a quote, uh, and I wanted to look it up, and it was Otto von Bismarck that basically unified Germany, and he said, God has a special providence. That means good luck or you know, uh, uh, a upper hand. God has a special providence for fools, drunkards, and the United States of America. And uh, that's been pointed out for a couple hundred years. We've had un unbelievable good luck. Just really magic things happen. I think we're losing that luck now because this isn't America. We've been overrun by criminals. And we have to show we have courage. So that's why I think God really loves people that have courage and who want people to be individuals and have free will. And, and Dr. Pachinik, in, in, in closing, thanks for all you do. Really appreciate it. I wasn't trying to toot our horn last hour. I just want listeners to understand that it's not that we're that strong. They're there that weak. We just have to understand that we have to move forward and have confidence to really change this. But um, finishing up, what are you looking for in the next 39 days? Uh, let's just hypothetically, if Hillary gets in, what what do you see happening there? I mean, I think their incompetence is, is really the most frightening thing I could imagine. You're correct. It's a it's combination between her illness, the incompetency, and the fact that they have to buttress her up. So you will see a lot of movement in the beginning and a lot of payoffs in terms of what will happen. But she will not make it through the first year. She will probably die within that first year or so. She's not physically fit to handle it, nor mentally. So what we have is a real problem for our intelligence and military community to really take an assessment of what's going to be happen if she comes in. That will be a very serious problem. It may be a John F. Kennedy type of problem. It may be a Nixonian type of problem. But I've been through this with Nixon and his transition to illness, and we've had a soft coup, but they, they're not going to have a uh, strong figures who are able to transition this country into a smooth uh, relationship. Won't they just have a big power struggle and hope she's an invalid so her, her adjuncts well, can... it's not only an invalid. It'll be kind of a Woodrow Wilson situation where you, you won't see her, and that's exactly what you're seeing now. She's totally absent from the field. She can't handle most of the issues. And that further discredits the government as the media lies and says she's fine, she's climbing Mount Everest. Correct. And so that that will be a disconnect, but it'll depend on our military and our intelligence services to determine what it is that they want to do. On one side, you have Michael Flynn on the Trump side. On the other side, you have Michael Hayden. Both are quite qualified. They come out of the military intelligence. I, I know both of these guys, not well, but enough to know that they're competent. The secondary issue is America has to understand we continue no matter who's in, on the top. And no one will, can defeat us. And really what we have to do is to continue to devolve that power to the local level, to the state level. And Where the real engine of prosperity is. Well, the real engine of prosperity, quite frankly, is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in the past two and a half weeks traveling 4,000 miles is the intermodal tra traffic systems that I've seen trucking between the trains, the ships, and our trucks. We're a formidable country. and you Sure, even though the trains weren't upgraded, Eisenhower's plan with the roads really sets us apart. That's correct. 
the, the genius of Eisenhower has still not been appreciated. A man stopped the war in Korea. He built our roads and warned us of the military-industrial complex. That's what we need right now. We need another Eisenhower. Can Trump? And he that? built the roads not just for the economy, but nobody could ever invade and win after those roads were built. Well, nobody did invade us. The only people who invaded us was Bush and Clinton and the, and the, and the internal... That's uh, it. And, and, and that's why they claim that I'm a Russian agent or whatever, no, because I don't want World War III. They can claim whatever they want, but calling us... Well, what do you make of that? I mean, in 30 seconds, what do you make of this ridiculous thing that Trump's a Russian agent? That's absurd. He's no more a Russian agent than Hillary's a Russian agent. Both do businesses with Russia. Podesta, who's the right-hand man to Hillary, and is totally corrupt. Uranium. The Podesta group does business with Russia, the Ukraine, and so does Manafort, and so does Trump. So that's that's equal. That's not the issue anymore. All right, Dr. Pachinik, always informative. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, and God bless your audience. God bless you. See and I'm Alex Jones, I'm going to punch out. Anthony Cumia. Coming up, host in the fourth hour, straight ahead, big syndicated talk show host in his own right, always informative. Looking forward to watching this in my office as I take care of business. Here he is, straight ahead in three minutes. Thank you so much for having me back. I, uh, I had a couple of weeks ago doing this and uh, love Alex, love the opportunity to come on here and uh, talk about things that matter. Some um, issues of, of the day, the week. Uh, the month, uh, of course, we got to talk about the debate last Monday, uh, Hillary and Donald had the first of the uh, 2016 presidential debates. And, um, I'm going to be honest, very disappointed with Donald Trump, very disappointed. I don't see it as him winning, uh, his camp. A lot of the polls that I saw going around the internet saw Donald Trump as the winner of that debate, um, some of the more biased mainstream media saw Hillary winning that one. Uh, each candidate, of course, crows about how um, they won, respectively. And I saw it as 15, 20 good minutes of Donald Trump at the beginning of the uh, debate, and then he fell apart. He was paying much too much attention uh, and spending much too much time defending himself against whatever non-existent, uh, inconsequential uh, allegations that were coming up uh, during the debate. Uh, Lester Holt, a shill, a shill for Hillary and the Democratic Party. Uh, he had to overcome that. I do give Trump the benefit of the doubt in that he had to deal with that. He had to deal with potential cheating. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know for sure that any of this was going on. But just the fact that there's a chance, and it seems feasible because Hillary has been such a liar over the years, that she cheated during the uh, debate, another thing that Trump had to overcome. So he had to go in there with his A game. Uh, expectations were low for him because he is a businessman. He's not a politician. Uh, although he has uh, been in a lot of conferences and boardrooms and whatnot, um, he's not a debater. He's not a political debate expert. So we, we also gave him the benefit of the doubt on that. Uh, but he got up there and did exactly what they, the Democrats and Hillary, uh, wanted him to do. They baited him and he took the bait. Uh, talking about the birth certificate issue, the birther issue, that, that uh, uh, Obama perhaps was not born in the country. Is that really something that, that I want these candidates talking about during a debate? Do I care? Do I care that he called a, a, a former Miss Universe contestant, was it, or Miss America contest, contestant? He, the guy ran beauty pageants. That's what he did. Yeah, he's a businessman, he's entertainer, reality show guy. So at one point in his career, he's running beauty contests 20 years ago. And uh, one of the, the contest winners gained weight. And Donald Trump called her Miss Piggy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, perhaps not the most politically correct thing to do, but uh, who said politically correct is uh, a good thing? Uh, again, he's in entertainment at the time. He's not running for office. He's not in office. 
Uh, and they're arguing about this during the presidential debate when they should be talking about national security, the economy, education, uh, and all of those things that Hillary has dropped the ball on in her 40 years uh, uh, in the public eye. Uh, that didn't get brought up, and I squarely placed the blame on Donald Trump. And again, Lester Holt, a shill, but, but a smart guy and a guy that has all that ammunition against Hillary Clinton should have used it. And for him to sit there and try to uh, justify him calling a beauty pageant winner from 20 years ago, Miss Piggy, was horrible, horrible to watch, frustrating as hell as, as a, a guy that wants real change in this country and wants uh, uh, to see what will happen if a guy gets in there that is a, a strong, smart businessman and not a professional lifetime politician not uh, beholden to other nations and companies and Wall Street like Hillary Clinton is. I want to see this. So it was very frustrating watching that debate to see her uh, getting over on, on him by bringing up inconsequential topics and subjects uh, and having him just sitting there or standing there defending himself. It looked bad. Uh, Hillary wasn't even supposed to be able to stand for 90 minutes. Uh, she was supposed to come out looking very haggard and terrible. Uh, she didn't. She came out looking spry, healthy. She didn't cough. She uh, stood there for uh, 90 minutes. Uh, that alone put her up a, a, a notch, uh, unfortunately. And look, believe me, I cannot stand the woman. Uh, I want to see Trump win. I want to see him do well, but I can't sit here and fake it that he won that debate. He didn't. He did not win that debate. He's got to do a much better job next time. I don't know what his strategy was. If it was, hey, we got a few of these things, uh, why would I shoot my whole uh, load of ammunition uh, at the beginning, the first debate? This isn't the one people remember. The last one, that's where you go in. That's the one people are going to remember the most when they go into the voting booths and pull the levers or press the buttons or whatever the hell we're, we're supposed to do this uh, election. Uh, that's why he needs to come out stronger in these next debates. He's got to uh, hit her harder. Now, of course, they would say, oh, hit her harder, you sexist, misogynistic monster. This is a woman. He can't look like he's bullying a woman. He can't look like he's beating up on a... This will be fact-based, and it will be um, exactly what he needs to do. There's so many things. Benghazi, bring it up. The email scandal, bring it up. They talked about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity came up. And, and Hillary gets to blurt out this. He was, was encouraging the Russians to, to hack into our computer system, not understanding th that Trump was absolutely being uh, sarcastic, telling a joke. Actually, the emphasis of that statement was the fact that Hillary's ser server and emails were so insecure out there and, and out there for anyone to get that, hey, Russia, if you happen to see them, send them over. The press wants to uh, get a hold of her emails. Uh, not, hey, Russia, spy on us. But, of course, they twist around everything because they are lifetime professional politicians. And uh, Hillary's talking about that, getting Trump on, on that issue. He doesn't turn around and say, how dare you, the gall of you to try to tell the American people that you're the cybersecurity person? the go-to person in the age of cybersecurity? It's, that's a no-brainer. That's an easy softball lobbed right at him. Don't just go, wrong, no. You're, you're on the debate stage. Uh, a record number of people are watching you. Slammer. She's got a, a horrific, horrific record 
that you could use against her. And I didn't see that. And damn it, it was frustrating. Frustrating to watch. And toward the end, he fell apart even more. He's explaining his, his finances. He, he, he's explaining uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, birth certificate issue. I mean, honestly, turn it around. Tell the American people, look into that camera at the debate and tell them this is nonsense. I, I, was, I was talking on, on my own program about how, how, where would that rate for America in, in importance? to national security, borders, uh, education, crime, violence, race relations, foreign policy, the economy, jobs. Where does he said Miss Piggy to a beauty pageant girl 20 years ago? Where does that rate on your list as an American as important? Pretty far down the line, I'd say. I'm going to take a stab at it and say that the majority of American people, even the ones that are in a basket of deplorables, would say that that wouldn't even show up. Yet it was on the world stage during a presidential debate, and Trump didn't turn around, and instead, instead of, of, of explaining it, he didn't just turn around and go, really, is that what we're going to discuss here? Lester, Hillary? That's what we're, uh, that's what the American people, 85 million of them that have tuned into this, that's what they want to hear us talk about. Or do they want to hear about how she left four people to die in Benghazi? Or her, her uh, emails are all over the globe because she decided an unsecured server was a good idea. Really? Her, her uh, Clinton Global Initiative. The foundation is so corrupt and was selling off the American government. Do you think that's a little more important, people, than if I said that Donald uh, that uh, uh, Obama didn't have a birth certificate, or that I called a beauty queen Miss Piggy? I, I think you know the answer uh, to that one, people. I think you know the answer uh, to that. Uh, again, thanks uh, for having me. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. This is InfoWars. I'm Anthony Cumia uh, for uh, Alex Jones, the wonderful Alex Jones. I'll be right back. Uh, back, Anthony Cumia on InfoWars.com. Uh, introducing Biome Defense, the first ever probiotic from InfoWarsLife.com. Get it with free shipping. Biome Defense. By InfoWars Life is a superior blend of 50 billion live and active cultures from 23 different probiotic strains. That's a lot of cultures, which uh, are known to support digestion and intestinal function. The experts agree that uh, gut health plays a huge role in the normal function of your immune system, and it's essential for optimum health. Your gut, that gut of yours, is even home to over 100 million neurons brain neurotransmitters and is uh, often called your second brain right there in your gut because of the direct link between the brain and the digestive system. Uh, Biome Defense produced right here in these very United States of America at uh, a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and lab tested for quality. Get Biome Defense in ultra strength or regular strength today with free shipping. Just go to InfoWarsLife.com and uh, start supercharging your gut health with our ultra-high quality probiotics. Biome Defense from InfoWarsLife.com. How you doing, people? We are back. Uh, InfoWars.com. I'm Anthony Cumia. Cumia. I can't even say my last name when I do this. My show, I say my name all the time. I never screw it up. Doing InfoWars, I screw up my own name. I don't know how it's done. Uh, wonderful, wonderful to uh, be back. Was just talking about Hillary, uh, Donald, the debate of uh, last uh, week or the beginning of the, uh, the week, um, and some of his shortcomings. I was a little uh, disappointed with uh, the Donald 
as uh, he was called uh, in New York many years ago, the Donald. I was disappointed, though, and think that he really, really needs to step it up next time. I don't like the yes men. I, I watch the news. I see a lot of people pop up uh, saying, that was great. Oh, my God. He doesn't need yes men. He has plenty of those. You need somebody to say, Donald, uh, here's what you really need to do next time. Uh, I think Giuliani's a good guy for that. Giuliani, a little nutty. <laughs> the last time I've seen him on, on the news, the last few times, a little nutty. But I like it. Full of energy and uh, has the right message out there. Um, I, I don't like seeing a lot of this uh, Donald standing there saying, uh, I agree with uh, the secretary on this or that. There's, there's plenty of other stuff to talk about than agreeing with uh, the good Secretary Clinton um, at these debates. He needs to slam her uh, on her, her horrid record of everything that she's done. I could, can't think, except for maybe John Kerry as Secretary of State, of a worse Secretary of State than Hillary Clinton. There isn't any of a, 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 a huge accomplishment. Most Secretary of States, they have these accomplishments that are their legacy. Uh, hers? Some um, dead Americans in Benghazi. A Middle East that is more unstable now than ever, perhaps? Could it be ever? Uh, and, and she and, and Obama directly, directly involved with uh, making that um, as unstable as it is. Uh, in the Middle East right now. Uh, he, uh, oh, 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 Trump also needs to get on her about the fact that she's had the chance. He brought up, you know, hey, you had 30 years. He said that in the debate. Hey, you know, Madam Secretary, you had 30 years to do something and you did nothing. Expand on that. Uh, bring up those 30 years and, and what she didn't do. And the, the nightmare that uh, uh, she did do to, to this country. Bring up the husband. Bring up the infidelity. It, it, it shows her lack of judgment. Uh, it shows her hypocrisy. The president for women. Girls need to know that there's a place uh, because Hillary will, will lead you and show you. Excuse me, she defended a child rapist as a lawyer in the 70s and then laughed about the fact that she got him off the hook uh, and knew that he was indeed guilty of, of raping a 12-year-old girl. That's the kind of president for the women that uh, we want? I don't think so. Trump needs to bring this up. March, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, back. Anthony Cumia on Infowars.com. Um, just when you think things can't get any more ridiculous, and uh, just when you think Barack Obama couldn't screw things up uh, with such limited time left in his tenure as president of these United States, uh, 48 hours from now, Obama is turning over control of the internet to foreign entities, which really means the United Nations, uh, which they, they promised it would not go to. But um, first of all, the biggest question is why? Why would we, as a country, give over control of the internet to anybody? This is technology made here in the United States for our own uh, uh, convenience, information, a uh, future uh, built with our minds and materials here in this country. Once again, just amazing things that came out of the United States. Uh, and for years, as an exceptional nation, we were very proud of these things that we built and, and uh, uh, showed the world how exceptional this country is and why 
We are, are uh, proud to be Americans. And Obama decides, meh, why does the United States have to be so exceptional? Let's give away the store and the internet will be going to foreign uh, entity, some uh, group, a consortium of countries that um, uh, will take control of the internet. How is this a good thing? The reason the United States should and has had control of the internet, not, not even the fact that it was, it was made here. Uh, our basic principles, freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, uh, all are very conducive to making the internet what it is. An open, free environment to voice your opinions, good or bad, popular or unpopular. Uh, it's supposed to work that way. And believe me, in the United States, you, you can't find a better country, a better uh, nation of free people to run it. I know sometimes it just looks like a disaster, <laughs> but therein lies the, uh, the, 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 that's the rub, as they say. It's, it's supposed to be good and bad. It's supposed to be an amazing transfer of information and a despicable place where horrid things are said. Um, that's why America is the place the internet should be. Uh, it should be under control of. Uh, who thought it would be a good idea to turn over control of the Internet to the likes of China? Yes, China will have a hand in deciding uh, how the Internet goes into uh, this, this century. Uh, do you really think they want honesty, truth? Freedom of expression, freedom of press. Do you think China wants that? When already in their corner of the world's uh, uh, internet, um, they uh, have a false digital security certificates for a number of websites, which is a way for them to keep tabs on what everybody's doing on on other websites. You think you think you're in China? You're going to. Uh, open and free websites. They're petrified over there. People write things, uh, uh, about dissidents about the government over there, and they get in big trouble. Not just, you know, oh, I wrote something politically incorrect on Twitter. Oh, I'm in trouble, trouble. Jail. Or worse, execution. They don't want to hear freedom and openness and criticism in, uh, in China. Uh, if that's not bad enough, how about Russia? How about Russia wants uh, or is going to have a say in uh, the main framework and, and the future of the World Wide Web, uh, what is the, the Internet? Uh, do, you, do you trust Vladimir P Putin? Is gonna, there you go, Chinese dissident lawyer. Uh, I'm not even going to try with the name. I won't even try. Destroyed by jail. That's, that's how it works. They don't want freedom. Russia, another uh, uh, country that's going to uh, have a say. They've uh, chipped away at internet freedom in Russia since uh, Putin returned to the Kremlin in 2012. As International Business Times puts it uh, in their 2014 article, one of Putin's new laws requires bloggers with over 3,000 readers to register with the government. Does that sound like a place where something like InfoWars can uh, broadcast and be open? Look at this guy. I don't think I want this guy having to say in what happens uh, on, on the Internet. <laughs> you think he's going to like your tweets and your uh, Facebook posts? You think he's going to like some of your uh, opinions? I don't think so. But Obama thought. This was a good idea. And if you don't think it's going to affect our freedoms and what we do here uh, in the United States on the Internet, the freedoms we so enjoy, uh, you're delusional. 
this is another way that Barack Obama has uh, knocked down the old U.S. a notch. There it is. Give away that Internet, right? Give it away. Uh, this is how he's knocked the United States down a notch. He does not like the United States to be exceptional, to be a place that other countries envy, look at with uh, respect, fear, uh, and, and leadership. They look at the United States as a, a world leader. Uh, Obama never liked that. Um, if you've read anything about his dad, dear old dad, uh, his father had a massive problem with imperialism and perceived colonialism uh, of uh, Western nations, uh, the UK, the United States, and that carried over. That absolutely carried over into uh, Obama's mindset. And it, he sees it as his job to bring down the U.S., knock it down a little bit. Got, it got a little too big for its britches, and Obama's going to bring it down a bit. And um, controlling the people's ability to voice their opinions, voice their dissent, uh, is an amazing way of doing this. Because uh, we as a people, I, I, I still believe, even though uh, a lot of us are in a huge basket of deplorables, we as American people are amazingly brilliant, resilient, uh, innovative, uh, when we're able to collectively work out problems, communicate, um, and share ideas. And that's what the Internet is for. And that's what we do. When you take that away, uh, you're left with a government that has a lot more power and you're left with uh, a people that has a lot less say uh, in their own country and on the world stage. And that's exactly what Obama's been doing to the United States of America for all these years. Uh, I, I was so proud of the space program growing up. My God, to me. It was magic as a child to uh, watch a Saturn V rocket, a skyscraper that, that they amazingly launched into the sky uh, and took men to the moon. And now we sit and hitch a ride with the Soviet, uh, the ex-Soviet Union, <laughs> Russia. We have to hitchhike because we don't even have a vehicle to take Americans into space anymore. Again, knocked down a few notches. Our exceptionalism that led to America, uh, Americans and the American flag uh, being on the moon, that had to be done away with for some reason. And if you don't think Hillary Clinton is in that same category, um, a globalist, someone that wants to uh, rule the world, <laughs> be on the global stage, make America just another part of the, the bigger global picture. Boy, are you sadly mistaken if you don't think that's what uh, Hillary wants. Uh, she's proven it. That's what she's done over the years. And um, I don't know. I don't like it. I do like a tad bit of nationalism um, in, in our country, national pride uh, being exceptional. Hillary Clinton out raising uh, Trump 20 to 1 among billionaires. <laughs> this is globalism. This is a woman that wants to be president of uh, the United States in a global arena. She has no pride in this nation. She doesn't want our country to do well. She wants her and her elitists, global elitists like uh, Soros, all of them to do well and get as much power over the world as they can. Um, Donald Trump, on the other hand, really seems to be a guy that wants to make America great again, as they say, uh, by bringing it back on, on the world stage as a power, as a respected and feared power, using all of our resources to 
make the, uh, the country uh, great and make it respected again. When Hillary knocks him on that and says, the country is great. Donald Trump says, America isn't great anymore. Uh, <laughs> she's missing the point. Or purposefully blowing off the point, which is, it isn't great in that it's not respected. It doesn't have leadership in the world anymore. And uh, that needs to be brought back. It can be done. I think uh, under different circumstances, we saw it with Carter and Reagan. When Jimmy Carter was president, uh, the United States lost a lot of clout and, and was uh, a, a joke to the world. Militarily, it was a disaster uh, economically. And uh, as far as having any say on the world uh, stage, if I may say world stage again, I think I said it 18 times already. Uh, it was a joke. A and Reagan came in and once again uh, restored some pride to the country. And I, I would hope someone can do that. And Trump is the guy on the other end. And uh, I hope, like, like I said about the debates, though, uh, he's got to step it up. This is the big time. This is not a time to sit back and hope she screws up or falls down again or uh, something like that. He's got to get up there and really rip down her, the Democrats, the globalists, all the people that are trying to take away and have successfully taken away that American exceptionalism that uh, we've enjoyed for so long. Like I said, as a kid, watching the, that Saturn V lift off from the pad, knowing that Americans built this and, and, and were going to the moon and bringing the men back, uh, was just an amazing thing. A and we just don't have that stuff to grab onto anymore, to feel good about as Americans. We, we just feel negative these days about being American. We've been told for so many years that we're terrible and we should be guilty and horrified at everything, our history, what we do now, how we've treated people is awful. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, you expect us to feel good and proud? It's another way to make it easier to kick us down a few notches. If we as a people feel horrible about what we've done as a nation, uh, it's that much easier to change things and, and, and try to reprogram uh, uh, the country into thinking that um, we aren't good and we don't deserve the, the great things that we, uh, we've been built and, and the amazing opportunities and, and lifestyles that we have here in the United States. Uh, yeah, Seeds of Disorder High School course is now dedicated to teaching American guilt. That's it. It's part of this bigger picture. It, 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 this isn't coincidence that all these little things that knock us down just happen to be uh, uh, going on at the same time. It's a way to demoralize us and, and take the pride and change the history, make our history an evil thing. Evil. Uh, that way it could be changed. Oh, a guilt. And you see it, people. You see the guilt, the blatant, rampant guilt of us living a, an amazing life. The fact that no one is literally starving to death in this country. I get heat for saying this all the time. There are hungry children all over the place. There's poverty and there. Yes, but no one is literally starving to death in this country. I don't think it could be said in any other country. You don't see people on the side of the streets in a field dying of starvation. Occasionally, there's a maniac that locks their kid to a radiator and doesn't let him eat. Uh, there are children that obviously are uh, uh, not uh, getting the food they need on a daily basis and uh, are, are suffering from malnutrition. But we're not seeing this starvation going on. Do you know how amazing that is in a country of 300 million people? That's amazing. And that should be something we should be proud of.
Uh, but we're guilty about it. We're guilty that we have so much food and uh, uh, shelter for people. And why? Bask in our uh, exceptionalism as, as Americans. Feel good about yourself. Feel proud. Want to do more. Want to be better. A a and restore some pride again to uh, how we feel as Americans. And not so much uh, like we're this horrible group of people that have done nothing but uh, terrorize uh, the earth with our amazingness. Be right back. Until tonight only, InfoWars, giving you free shipping store-wide at InfoWarsStore.com as part of this week's Reclaiming Liberty special. Now is the time to get your uh, super high-quality nutraceuticals. Storable food, heirloom seeds, water filters, made in America gear, and so much more. What are you waiting for, by the way? The world's coming apart at the seams. You got a go bag? I got a go bag. And it's uh, loaded up with stuff that you need. Uh, made in America. And uh, so much more. Uh, visit InfoWarsStore.com and take advantage of store-wide free shipping before that's pulled tonight. How you doing, people? We are back. Infowars.com. I'm Anthony Cumia. Uh, you could catch me at compoundmedia.com uh, Monday through Thursday from 6 or uh, 4 to 6 p.m. I don't even know when I'm on. It's 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern um, on compoundmedia.com. I love being here at Infowars.com. Thank you so much to Alex Jones and uh, his staff over there who are uh, amazing. I love it. Um, the media, oh boy. They have shown their true colors this uh, election. Uh, before we knew the, how biased they were and how terrible uh, and un, un, um, fair they've been to uh, uh, the candidates. Uh, but until this election, they almost tried to hide it. You would talk about liberal bias in the media and uh, people would be like, oh, stop, you're paranoid. Oh, please. Oh, they're biased the other way, here, here, and here. Uh, but, man, have they just, they're so desperate to get their uh, candidate elected and to keep Trump out that they've just gone full bias. They, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. And um, you could see uh, just striking examples of this on a daily basis. Um, one thing I've noticed, and they, they've never done this. There it is, conservatives. Yep, you're right. The media is very liberal, liberal bias. Um, guns. I, I've been in so many arguments with people about the Second Amendment, guns, gun rights, types of guns. I've never seen a, a, a less informed group of people than liberal anti-gun uh, the, the liberal anti-gun crowd. They know nothing about the laws, the mechanics of guns, how they're used, when they're used, the laws. They know nothing, yet they know everything when uh, you argue with them. Uh, so what I was uh, noticing when I argue with people is, oh, you know, guns are never used to uh, thwart crimes. Most of the time they're used to uh, accidentally kill a child or shoot a spouse or something like that. And the truth of the matter is um, they're used plenty of times uh, in thwarting crimes. We've seen it time and time again. You have to look, though. I like going to um, uh, the NRA. They have a list of, of uh, situations where people have used guns uh, to thwart crimes and protect themselves. Armed citizen, it's called. Armed citizen. Uh, get that information out there because it really is amazing and the press will never report on it. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here. I'm ecstatic to once again uh, do uh, Infowars.com. Uh, again, you can hear me on Compound Media uh, from Monday to Thursday, 4 to 6. Thank you so much. I'm Anthony Cumia. This has been Infowars.